Thank you. Good morning, I'd like to call to order the Sweetwater County Board of County Commissioners meeting on this Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. I would like to announce that uh, we do have a quorum present, all commissioners, and I'd ask if everyone would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good morning, fellow commissioners. Good morning. I would at this time, first uh, course of action would be to approve the agenda. I would like to amend the agenda by adding contracts to executive session. So moved. We have a motion to approve with the amended adding contracts to executive session by Commissioner Smith. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign, motion carries. Next up is the approval of the minutes from February 16th, 2021 regular meeting. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? I'd move to approve, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to approve the minutes. I'll, I'll second. Yeah, uh, to approve the minutes of February 16th, 2021. I have a second by Commissioner Toman. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, also next up is the approval of the the February 16th strategic planning workshop minutes of uh, again, March or February 16th, 2021. Commissioners, what's your? Mr. Part? Chairman? Yes, Commissioner. Lowe. I would move that we approve the 2021 216 strategic planning workshop minutes. We have a motion to approve the strategic planning workshop minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, same sign, motion carries. Next under tab B is acceptance of the bills, which at this time is the county vouchers and warrants, bonds, ABH rebates, and approval of the hospital maintenance expenditures. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Smith. I move that we approve the warrants and vouchers, bonds, ABH rebates, and the uh, hospital maintenance expenses as presented. We have a motion by Commissioner Smith to approve the acceptance of the bills as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion carries. Moving forward. Next up, I believe under tab C is a budget amendment. And to present that budget amendment, uh, with us is Miss Bonnie Berry, and we have that a budget amendment for the county assessor and the child development center. Miss Berry, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Floor Chairman is, and Commissioners. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, the first budget amendment we have this morning is for uh, the county assessor. Uh, this budget amendment um, increases expenditures in the general fund for the county assessor capital by $9,116.44, and it decreases the general fund expenditures county assessor operating by $9,116.44. So essentially, um, the county assessor would like to move uh, this amount from operating to capital to purchase a new copier. And I believe Dave is on Zoom. I believe he's joined us on Zoom to answer any questions that you may have about this. But this is for a copier. And um, just to remind you, uh, this will need to be opened up to the public before it can be voted on. Very good. So before we move to a public hearing for this uh, budget amendment, I see that our county assessor, Mr. Davis, is, is on Zoom. Mr. Davis, do you have anything else to add? Well, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, um, this really started with the strategic planning process and then Gene's request for us to actually try and um, list our capital expenditures over the next two or three years. Um, 
I had talked to uh, the gentleman that services our copier, um, and it's actually a copier and a printer. Um, we had talked about the life expectancy of this particular unit, and I did check the, the counter this morning. We ran 542,988 uh, pieces of paper pieces of paper through this machine. Um, the gentleman that services it said the me mechanical parts are still available. They're kind of difficult to find, but he said if any of the electronics go out, this thing is done. They're just not available and it wouldn't be worth the time. Um, so what I'd like to do is use the money left over from our unexpended travel budget. Um, we had no meetings last year, no, no education last year. And this seemed like a good time to reallocate those funds for this copier slash printer. We do use this to print our personal property renditions. Those are about 4,500 pages. We send out 1,100 veterans exemptions and widows exemptions. And then this year we sent out, it was probably close to 1,000 pages as well for agricultural affidavits this year. Um, I did talk to Marty about this after um, she requested the quote from the vendor. Um, she thought it was a reasonable quote. Her and I kicked around the ideas of, of moving forward with this. And, and basically what I'd like to do, we've had over the past, we've had a couple of laser printers that have been provided to us by the Department of Revenue. And the laser printers are great. They didn't cost us anything, they're fantastic. But those toner cartridges to replace those, it's almost like an unfunded mandate. I mean, the, the, the black copier the, or the black toner cartridge is $156 and is good for about 5,000 pages but the color ones are $233 a piece and you have to put in three. So by the time we're all done, if we change everything out, it's like $850 that we would be spending periodically on this. And this new unit would actually be cheaper in the long run, I think. Um, I think it's just a better printing strategy for the county. And I would hope you would approve this request. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Um Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Davis or Ms. Berry before we move forward with the public hearing? Commissioners? Mr. Davis? Yes, sir. Um, the only questions I'd have is uh, as we move forward and we talk and we work into our strategic planning and working with our other departments as well as elected officials, there comes a point in time where we need to think about doing things more efficiently, more effectively. And that even means combining um, provided services across the board through the elected offices, as well as through the uh, department heads, basically through core county government. Um, is this machine of such that it is capable to be uh, situated in a central location to where as other copiers go out, we would not have to replace them, but they could be uh, wired with internet. So they could be used by um, like an entire floor in the courthouse or throughout the courthouse so that we can begin to uh, put together uh, working areas versus individual machines in individual areas. Absolutely. This is something that would be networked and it does have a network card. Uh, Marty checked with the vendor. Um, it is something that can be tied into the network and, and this particular vendor has worked with Tim and the IT department in the past. It should be fairly simple, I would think. Um, and, and, you know, to your point, I think, you know, I think the maintenance department and the custodial department come in and borrow our copy on occasion quite a bit as well. Um, and just for your information too, when we were trying to spec this thing out, we did strip it down pretty good. The, lot, the one we currently have has a fax component to it. We've eliminated that. The current one has an 11 by 17 tray that was, I think it was like 1500 or $2,000 that would have added to the cost of this, this new unit that we're trying to buy. And we took that out as well. Um, we did really go bare bones and we're really trying to, you know, be efficient. We really are. I mean, this is, this is a long-term um, shift for us. I mean, as these laser printers go away, in order to avoid paying those toner cartridge fees, we're just going to start using this copier slash printer instead of having those laser printers in the office. So, you know, I think we're doing what you've asked. It just takes this initial investment to make it happen. Thank you. One other question that I would ask is uh, through the process of determining what's best as we move forward for this was there any investigation as to whether or not the uh, um, assessor's office could network with a, any other 
copiers in the um, county building? I didn't ask Tim specifically. I did ask Cindy um, Clerk Lane if ours did happen to crash, which you know we're getting nervous about. If it did crash, if we would be able to shift whatever jobs we had currently over to hers until repairs are made until or until the item was replaced. Um, she was okay with that. And I'm very confident in Tim and his people. I'm sure they could make that work as well. Thank you very much. That's all the questions I have. Any other questions, commissioners? Uh, what brand is it? The one we currently have is a Savin and that's what we would be replacing it with as well. Um, I believe this printer was actually put in um, when Mr. Rousey was the assessor. So it's been a very, very good model. It's, it's not anything that, um, you know, we've had tremendous amount of repairs, although the maintenance is getting more and more often. Um, the toner seems to leak a little bit more. The, the guys have to show up quite a bit more to do the service on it. But it, I do think this is a good brand. And, and at least with the one we've had, I think we've had very good luck with it. Any other questions, commissioners? Mr. Shanefield, did you have something or did it get answered? It, it kind of got answered. I'm good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. I just want to make sure any more questions for Ms. Barry or um, Mr. Davis regarding this budget amendment before we open it up for public hearing. Anything else to add, Ms. Barry? No. Okay. At this time, I will open up the floor for a public hearing regarding Resolution 21-03-CL-01, which is a budget amendment out of the assessor's office uh, to move money from capital, or I'm sorry, to move money from, hang on now, I got to get down a little further. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to uh, move money out of the uh, assessor's operating fund into a capital fund to replace a copier. Floor is now open for public hearing. Floor is now open for public hearing. Comment. Any comment? With no comment for public hearing, I do close this part of this agenda item. Commissioners, what's your pleasure regarding this resolution? Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Smith. I move that we approve resolution 21-03-CL-01 as presented. We have a motion to approve resolution 21-03-CL-01 as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you Wait. very much, Mr. Davis. Hold on, Mr. Chairman. I, I would like it to reflect that I, I did not. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear that. No. I'm sorry. Okay, so we do have a motion that did carry with an opposite one opposing vote and please list it as Ms. Shanefield. Thank you. Moving on, Bonnie. All right, the second uh, budget amendment that we have this morning is resolution 21-03-CL-02. This budget amendment increases the expenditures in the CDC fund by $40,000. Uh, this is just a follow-up of a change that was made to the MOU a few meetings ago uh, to increase that disbursement by $40,000. Uh, previously, we were um, dispersing 60,000 a year out of the CDC fund. Um, but a few meetings ago, uh, Rob came in also, and also a representative from the CDC uh, to request that uh, that MOU be amended um, to increase it for, by $40,000. So that's what this is, just to follow up on this. Um, they are planning on paying that out in June um, per the amendment to the MOU. Uh, so are there any questions before uh, this gets opened up to a public hearing? Um, before we go to questions, Bonnie, I'm, I see Mr. Slaughter's on, so I'm gonna 
bring him in and see if he has anything more to add. Great. All right, Mr. Slaughter, you're there, I see. Do you have anything more to add regarding this resolution for this budget amendment? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. No, uh, Bonnie called me and talked with me about this yesterday, letting me know that she wanted to get this resolution done so that it would be in place at the point in time where we're ready to make payment of that in June. Um, this is just, once again, following in accordance with what was done with that resolution, or excuse me, with that um, change to the uh, agreement which we have with the CDC. So I, I think Bonnie summed it up pretty well. Um, this is just the final step so that we're able to, to finish that. All right, thank you, Mr. Slaughter. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Slaughter or for Ms. Berry? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Lloyd. Um, just a point of clarification, just to make sure I'm on the right page with from Ms. Berry. This money comes from the leftover reserves from the six penny project, correct? That's correct. Okay. This does not come out of the general yeah. fund. I was a 99.9% .9 sure, but I just want to clarify before we move forward. Yes. No, thank you, Commissioner Lloyd, but that does need to be clarified any time we do these because that uh, is money that was put there for them. And thank you for bringing that forth. Any other questions for Ms. Berry or Mr. Slaughter, commissioners? Okay, with no further questioning at this time, um, I will open up uh, this resolution 21-03-CL-02, budget amendment for the uh, expenditure increase to the CDC fund of $40,000. Uh, notice of public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is now closed regarding this resolution. Commissioners, what's your pleasure regarding this uh, budget amendment increasing the CDC fund for $40,000? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shanefield. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. We have a motion by Commissioner Shanefield to approve the resolution 21-03-CL-02 as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Berry. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate it. Good seeing you. Have a good day and be safe. Thanks, Thank Bonnie. you, Dave and Rob, for joining us. With that, we'll move on to our next uh, agenda item. And that is liquor license. And here <laughs> to uh, present the renewal of the liquor license will be Ms. Lane. And what we'll do is have her present the liquor license and then we'll have all the liquor license in one public hearing. Mm -hmm. And then after the public hearing, we'll come back and we'll approve them by category. And okay. I believe there's four categories. There is. Thank you. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. So um, the liquor licenses were advertised um, to show a public hearing for today, March 2nd. Um, these are the county retail liquor licenses that have been requested. LT Enterprises doing business as White Mountain Mining Company, Buckboard Marina at Flaming Gorge LLC, Buckboard Marina, West's LLC, Eden Saloon, The Hub LLC, Mustang Travel Stop, Barley Mercantile LLC, The Point Bar, Laline A. Miller, Mitch's, Little America Hotels and Resorts doing business as Little America, Joetta LLC, The Travel Camp, Fast Stop, doing business as Cruel Jacks, Kayar Distributing, doing business as Kelly's Hitching Post, and Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores, doing business as Love's Travel Stop. The second category is the 
county resident liquor licenses. We have one that is Purple Sage Ventures doing business as the log in. We then have the county retail malt beverage permits, Roger Varley, Point Merck, Mustang Travel Stop, Eaton Investments Inc., Farson Feed Store, Little America Corporation doing business as Little America, Crossroads Travel Plaza. And then the last category is the county limited retail liquor licenses. And that one is Rolling Green Country Club doing business as Rolling Green Country Club. Okay, thank you. Any questions regarding the renewable liquor license for Ms. Lane before we open this up for public hearing? Commissioner Tillman. Well, I've just gotten some public feedback about the loves. They just fill it next to the interstate with the truckers drinking, but I, I don't know that we can do anything about it, but I just wanted to bring it. It was brought as a public concern to me. Thank you, Commissioner Tillman. Let the record show that there was a citizen uh, comment carried by Commissioner Tillman. Anything else, commissioners? Okay, at this point, we will open up this part of uh, this agenda item for public hearing. So now the floor is now open, public hearing. We'll take a little time to give people an opportunity to possibly s send the clerk an email. Nothing yet. I guess I could ask another question. Sure. I can't remember. Is Love's a full liquor license or just the malt beverage? Love's is a retail liquor license. A retail liquor license, and it's not in any city, right? It's out. It's in the county. The county. Mm -hmm. Has the Wyoming legislature passed the 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 legislation to open up those liquor licenses in the in the county? Do you know? I have not heard. I've there not, is the county there is a bill been watching I, I, that I, one, so I don't know. I yeah, I they probably know. haven't worked through it yet. Um, let me. Because I think there are only three liquor licenses for the entire county, which mm -hmm. which makes them very valuable. If they open it up to where anybody can apply for it, there could be right. So a right lot. Now, right now, we're <laughs> under the current old, one, old and rules. we yes. Any public comment? Any public comment coming? No. No. Okay. Let's just give it a little more time because it's important to people. Um, we have a total of we're allotted 14, 14 total retail liquor licenses, and there are currently 11 retail liquor licenses. And the total of fruits and beef issued within a five mile radius of any city in the county. Regardless of how many are still available out of the total 14, most of the licenses are available in the Rock Springs area due to three having already been issued. Green River has only one instance within a five mile radius, so two are available as long as it does not exceed the total allotment of 14 retail liquor licenses. Is that for the entire county, including the cities? Mm -hmm. Well, within the five mile range of a, of a oh, city. Oh. So Rock Springs has already given out their three that they're allotted. Green River has one. Oh, that's where the three come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Each Thank city. Mm -hmm. Any public comment come in yet? With that, I'll close public hearing. With that, uh, I'll ask that we move forward with no public comment and uh, have Miss uh, Lane by category um, read off each of uh, each of those, and then we'll have a separate motion. 
Okay, so under the County Retail Liquor License, White Mountain Mining Company, Buckboard Marina, Eden Saloon, Mustang Travel Stop, Point Bar, Mitch's, Little America, The Travel Camp, Cruel Jacks, Kelly's Hitching Post, and Love's Travel Stop. Thank you. Commissioners, regarding these retail liquor license, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shainfield. Make a motion to approve the county retail liquor licenses as presented. We have a motion to approve the renewal of the county retail liquor license as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion, commissioners? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Next group. Okay, the next group's the county restaurant liquor license, and that is the login. Okay, commissioners, we have one county restaurant liquor license, is that correct? Mm -hmm. To approve renewal for, what's your pleasure? Commissioner Toman. I would make a motion to approve the login liquor license. Okay, we have a motion to approve the login county restaurant renewal liquor license. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next category. <clears throat> Next category, county retail malt beverage permit, Point Merck, Mustang Travel Stop, Farson Feed Store, Little America, Crossroads Travel Plaza, and that's it. Okay, thank you. We have presented the establishments for the county retail malt beverage permit renewal commissioners what's your pleasure mr chairman commissioner lloyd i would move to present the county retail malt beverage permits as presented we have a motion to approve the county retail malt beverage renewal permits as presented is there a second 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 by commissioner shanefield all those any further discussion uh, commissioner toma uh, yeah mr chairman and uh Lane, do those come under the count of 14? That we have a 14? Uh-huh. Do yes. these malt ones come under the count? I don't think so. Okay, so count malt beverages permits are unlimited. Don't they cannot be issued to a business within a five mile radius of an incorporated city or county. They can only sell and serve malt beverages if their IQs are not considered a malt beverage. And the Rolling Green Country Club is within three and a half miles. So it's within the question mileage. answered. Okay, going back to the question. Any further discussion, commissioners? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Post, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, commissioners. And our last group. Oh, the last group is the county limited retail liquor license, and that is the Rolling Green Country Club. Commissioners, what's your pleasure on renewal of the county limited retail, what was it, liquor license? Yes. For Rolling, um, Rolling, Rolling Green, Green, Green Country Club? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shanefield. I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the county limited retail liquor license as presented. We have a motion to approve the county retail limited retail liquor license renewal as presented. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Tolman. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Well, we got through. We did. We Good got job. Done. All right, now I'm going back over here. Got some great questions, Commissioners. Thank you. Great information. All right, moving on. Our next agenda item is our county resident concerns. At this time, I'll open up the floor for county residents' concerns. Morning, Joy.
Nothing yet? Do it a couple, a little longer here. Portion. County residence concerns is now closed. As of that, we'll move on with our agenda. Commissioner reports up. Commissioner Shanefield, good morning again. Thank you. Um, so I've had budget discussions with Golden Hour Senior Center, um, the museum, the events complex, Boys and Girls Club, and um, our county clerk. Um, I still need to meet with Flaming Gorge Days and Hospice. And um, there is one thing that I had sent out in an email, but want to bring it up for discussion here. Um, would be input from my fellow commissioners on the question around cash carryover and whether we're going to allow for organizations to carry over unspent funds um, into next year. So in my opinion, I guess, I don't think it's an issue with them carrying it over, but if there's a consistent carryover year after year, that means that's built into their budget as extra. Um, and that's across the board, even with our core county. I know that there's different areas that have it in there just in case. Um, and so I would expect that those areas, um, if there's carryover that's consistent or there's a, not a good reason um, you know, for the carryover, maybe they got CARES Act funding and they're gonna carry it over and use that in their year this, this upcoming fiscal year, um, which would be a benefit to the county. But other than that, that's my opinion. So I'd, I'd love input from um, my other commissioners to see what the thoughts are. Thank you, Commissioner Report. Com Commissioner's comments, uh, Commissioner Toma. I guess I just have a question. I'm not sure who the question should be directed towards, but doesn't the law say we cannot carry over? It doesn't say we can't. I don't believe so, does it, oh. John? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good question. And in the past, they have been allowed to yeah. carry over. It's just built into their next year's budget. 21 years, I messed up then. <laughs> <laughs> co any other comments, commissioners, regarding um, carryover for, uh, I'll just say, outside agencies and uh, component units that... Uh, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Uh, my thought on that would be... Um, um, I do think that could be evaluated as Lauren said, Commissioner Shanfield said at the end of the budget, but I also think instead of saying they can't carry it over, that could be a part of our budget making decision. If we know an organization is asking for X amount of dollars, but they're covering carrying over $270,000, that could be a part of the decision making process we look at in making decisions on budgets. And that could potentially affect how much we give an organization knowing that, you know, we've done that in the past with, um, I think two years ago, specifically when the museum wanted to add another position, they had X amount of dollars in the reserve. So we didn't give them the money for the, posi the position. We, we, if we told them if they wanted, they could use their reserve. So I, I guess to me, that would factor into maybe the decisions we make regarding their budget. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Other comments, commissioners? I think it was very well said by Commissioner Shanefield and, and by Commissioner Lloyd, because I do think we need to factor in their carryover. Um, I've always been a uh, real firm believer that, uh, especially this year, if there's no rescue, everybody shares the pain. And if they have a carryover, that can supplement their budget rather than they be the bank for the county's money. My preference is the county banks its own money. And so therefore, I, I honestly, think in the direction we have chosen as commissioners to do our budget this year, um, which is looking at things a lot more carefully and strategically. I do believe we have every right to look at somebody and say, hey, you will use your, carry, your cash carryover to whatever level and be able to use the uh, county money, especially the mill levy money for our mandated statutory requirements for funding 
and uh, I think those are our first primary primary concern and uh, as we move forward. So I uh, support both and believe that uh, um, carryovers are part of the discussion for budget. And I believe that uh, we have every right for anybody who's requesting funds through us to request that they use their carryover um, as part of or in whole before we grant them funding. It's gonna be a tough, tough year, fellow commissioners, and uh, um, next year's not supposedly not gonna be any better without any rescue. And I still go back to the fact that if we don't do this, I don't know how we can expect to balance our budget on the backs of our employees, core government employees. So keep that in mind as we do, as we move forward. So, which is very important to me that we don't do that. We do not balance our budget on the backs of our employees. They are mandated statute expenses versus what we provide mill levy money for whether it's in uh, outside agencies or partial component units. Thank you. Does that help you out, Commissioner Shanefield? It does, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, anything, anything else? Yes, I do, I have others. Thank you. Um, so I attended the museum board meeting. Um, they shared some fairly staggering numbers in that they have now reached with their education online um, series, 9,000 students and over 7,000 individuals which is pretty awesome for, you know, just starting the online things, oh gosh, about a year ago now. Um, they're also working on getting their strategic planning um, up to date and approved so that they can tie it in with our county strategic planning. So that's exciting. Um, they're also were in the process of hiring a backfill for um, Dave's position. And we did have a discussion around um, them looking at maybe hiring something part-time or holding off in total. Um, and in the end, they did decide to increase a part-time position to a full-time position to help Dave with some of the administrative work um, that was piling up just because they've been short that position. So um, just for awareness. And then they also have a board vacancy um, that we will be looking at filling as well. Um, I did meet with the events complex as well, and they shared some additional information um, with me that I thought would be important for me to share with the um, commission and, and the public in that during COVID times, um, the events complex has been used um, for a lot of critical information and they actually gave me a brochure. I'm gonna send this out um, after today's meeting, but they've definitely been a part of the community that we don't necessarily think of. So every time the interstate shut down, um, they provide services to all of the truckers um, and a safe area for those guys to park. Um, they've also provided a great space for our vaccines. They've been set aside um, as, during COVID as a backup in case the hospital got overloaded or they, we needed space. Um, they have community partnerships with American Red Cross. They allow the police department canine units to go out there and they do training um, in their facilities. They do that without charge. Um, they've also provided space for our emergency management. Um, I know also when um, the trucks come in for the food donations, they've allowed that space and provided um, you know, provided some support in that area free of charge. Um, they partner with uh, Road and Bridge and have worked very closely with us there. They also allow for search and rescue to use their facilities um, for training and otherwise. They also partner with the school districts um, and the extension office. They have the, um, the pioneer days and different events out there that they provide free of charge. Um, and so I think that's something that we, I forget about. When I'm thinking about the events complex, I'm thinking about, you know, all of the additional shows that they have or the things that they bring in or the fair. Um, and so I wanted to bring those up just because I think it's important that we remember that, um, some of those things that they're providing the community. Um, they wanted me to share that they, um, the 2021, they've got a couple of good national events coming in. I'm gonna talk about those in just a minute. Let me pull their email up. Um, 
So they wanted me to let everybody know that they have some fairly large regional and national summer events coming in this year that had been rescheduled from last year. So there's a lucky three barrel race, World Series, team roping, um, Escapade RV rally, which um, they're estimating an economic impact of over $2 million. Um, the Wyoming Big Show County Fair is going to be coming back. They're getting ready to start announcing the um, the concert series for that Royal Crown Barrel and Roping Futurity, and then they have barrel racing all summer long. Um, they also wanted me to share with their budget that they have eliminated four full-time employees. Um, all of their current employees took a temporary 10% reduction to their salaries. Um, for the upcoming summer season and the large events that they are going to need all of their current full-time people, plus a few seasonal employees to be able to carry out these events that they have scheduled that are going to bring in money for our community. Um, and their annual economic impact for fiscal year 22 is estimated to be at 9,587,000 and some change. So I thought that all of that was very good information for us to share today. Um, and then the other thing that I've been working with is SEDC. And so they have their next uh, virtual business lounge is going to be a week from today, um, 3-9, the work-life balance um, part two. And that's with Kara Beach and Amanda. I was able to go on the, the first one and it was really a good series. Um, and so that is available on SEDC's Facebook page for registration. Um, Eric and Kayla have been working with Thomas P. Miller and Associates on the phase four of site selection and recruitment for the industrial development project out at Middle Baxter. They have started identifying potential companies in the public sector, and they are going to meet this month to talk about some private sector companies. They've narrowed it down um, to a few sectors from the study's top six um, to top four, and they're looking for recruitment opportunities um, for Sweetwater County for that. Um, a few of those are some inorganic and agricultural chemicals, um, distribution and e-commerce, computer services and software publishers, and some renewable energy equipment and manufacturers. Um, SEDC was also approved for the funding from the Wyoming Business Council for that rural development grant um, to help with the Entrepreneurial Committees program, which is going to start April 1st through the 31st, so that's exciting. And um, last but not least, the next radio interview with Johnny K is going to be on March 25th at 8 a.m. Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, that was long today. No, nope, good report. <laughs> uh, commissioners, any questions for Commissioner Shadefield? No questions, we'll move on. Up next, Commissioner Lloyd. Good morning. Good morning, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, wanna start with some positive stuff that isn't necessarily commission, but relates to the county. Um, Rock Springs, Green River combined together their high schools and raised over $38,000 in one week during a pandemic or what we call a, a much changed world we live in in COVID for Make-A-Wish. And just in perspective, the Green River Rock Springs group makes more money than most of this count high schools statewide combined. So what they did was amazing. They did it in one short one week shorter than normal. Uh, most of their traditional events had to change. But I just think it shows some great potential leadership for many young people throughout the county. And I think they should be um, they should be commended for that, too. During that time, they also combined to raise over um, 600 donations of blood for the blood drive. So great work for those younger kids. Um, also want to congratulate the Green River High School uh, cheerleading team on being the first team ever from Wyoming to be accepted to go to nationals at Disneyland, Disney World, which is pretty awesome. And then and we all know I'm a wrestling guy at heart and congratulations to the Green River High School wrestling team for taking fourth. But in Sweetwater County, we had three state champions, one at 106 at Kel Knezovich from Green River, and then um, kind of bookend champions um, at 106 from Rock Springs, um, Brock Fletcher and AJ Kelly from Rock Springs. And I think those people should be commended for their great work. And sometimes we get so crazy. And I mean, all I think about anymore is budget. And um, even when I go to the grocery store, I worry about the county budget. And so... Um, so with that being said, it's kind of good sometimes to remember the good things that are happening and the good people in our county also. As far as liaison work, uh, Conservation District, I get to go to my first meeting on Thursday at 4, so I'm really excited. I'm, I've already read the agenda. It will be really interesting, and I'm excited to go into something I'm, I don't have a lot of knowledge about and expand that knowledge. So um, Library Board, a couple things from Jason I wanted to share. The Children's Discovery Center at the Rock Springs Library will actually be opening on March 22nd. 
Uh, they'll be doing two sessions per day. People will have to sign up um, and they'll let me know on the ribbon cutting. But I think that's a, um, I actually, the month, I think last February, March, I got a preview of what it looked like. Then COVID hit and it kind of slowed things down. It's really amazing what they have for donations and stuff, um, exhibits down there for the, um, it's very interactive and it's, it's gonna be a great addition to our community. Uh, the library is also participating in the Creative Aging in Wyoming uh, Public Libraries program. Um, it helps connect p uh, older adults with the arts. Um, they are getting ready to start um, providing passport services at White Mountain Library and the Small Business Center at White Mountain Library uh, that will connect small businesses and entrepreneurs should be ready in April. And they've started some new databases. So, um, and then um, they've continued and, um, to um, with their uh, dialogue book program. I also read one. My book title was not nearly as excited as Commissioner um, Smith's book title but I did get to read Thunder Jr., which will become in circulation in, a, in April. But um, I have to tell you, I just, we joke about the book stuff and we laugh. And even though Jeff had the best book of all time, they, uh, I even asked the librarian, is that really the book title? And she confirmed. So, um, <laughs> but with that being said. Uh, uh, you doubt me. I don't want to buy the book, but anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll buy it for you. But they, uh, I'll actually just listen to Jeff read it to me. But they, uh, <laughs> but I think it just shows the libraries of willingness to go with the punches. And I just think they need to get some great praise because, yeah, they can't do story times, but they're finding creative ways to continue out and make things happen. So kudos to the library. Starboard will be, um, we're actually going to be moving the meeting a week. We'll be meeting on the 15th, but still things are um, functioning at this point and moving forward. Uh, joint telecommunications, um, my first meeting with them will actually be on the 29th of March. Excited about actually going to a meeting and doing that. As far as um, other, um, uh, Gary, um, um, Lauren and I both had opportunities to meet with Gary. Uh, the accolade stuff will be up and running as of today as part of our health insurance. Um, bamboo seems to be going well. And uh, Gary and I and Lauren have also had some conversations um, unfortunately, the three of us haven't been able to sit together in the last two weeks, but we've all had conversations amongst each other. Um, we just couldn't get a date and time set with all three of us um, on starting to look at some of the redundancies and um, duplicated services. So uh, we're working toward that. Uh, Gene did send us an email with information um, uh, regarding maintenance. Um, as he did note, there's nothing too exciting going on, so we didn't get pictures this week. But um, Much buildings... <laughs> <laughs> just as well. Yeah. Uh, the bill, uh, just buildings, the uh, courthouse boilers project punch list is almost complete. The chemical water for treatment finally is within the specified specified ranges, and they're all waiting for some fine tuning. Uh, they're having a hard time keeping the IT server room cool at the courthouse. One of our cooling units has been having trouble keeping the correct temperature overnight. Uh, the rolling shelving unit from the juvenile probation uh, building has been reinstalled downstairs in the museum. This will almost triple their storage space in that room. Um, and the C Street building is being cleaned out and organized for the surplus cell. Uh, the purchasing crew has been working almost every day, moving, sorting, and organizing items. Everything has been relocated to um, from the county attorney's building to the main building, and the custodial staff cleaned this building from top to bottom. Um, as far as engineering, the grinder project has been submitted through the DEQ. This Folsom Pyramid Lester Drive project is undergoing a 50% review. And we're also in the process of designing an asphalt overlay project that will bid on later this spring. And Road and Bridge, all three of the new sanders have been installed on their trucks. We've also taken advantage of the lack of snow. And last week, all of our Road and Bridge personnel were able to attend a Caterpillar motor grader one day training. This training was provided by CAT free of charge. Uh, we were able to conduct training with four to six of our operators per day. So they received some very good training and personalized training. Uh, the new operators have also started rotating two at a time to the Caterpillar facility and started to learn how to operate the graders on their stimula simulation machines. So good stuff going on in Gene's area. And Christina is currently out um, but um, um, with family stuff. And, um, but she is um, continuing to work on CARES Act project with a big focus on the um, racking, wrapping up the, um, the, uh, the nonprofit CARES Act money that we've been looking at. Um, as far as intergovernmental, um, I was able to put together a committee and um, meet with the animal control group to um, kind of look at unification possibilities down the road. And um, we'll share more about that tomorrow night, but I felt it was productive and we will be having another meeting next month. Uh, Lauren and I did have a conversation about Six Penny and 
um, time frame wise, we're not at a great time frame, but we're looking forward. We're looking at them um, having kind of an organizational meeting and sending some timelines. Is that fair, Lauren? Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry I didn't mention okay. that. And then, um, and then wrapping up budget discussions and talking to folks about budgets. There are a few I need to reach out to, um, and moving forward with that process um, is important. And outside of that, um, just have been worked had multiple meetings with department heads. Um, elected officials and um, also um, constituents. Um, and then just wrapping up real quick is um, in really what is one of the oddest years of state legislature, um, they are meeting now in person uh, starting this week for the month. I really encourage the constituents to keep an eye on bills. There's a lot of major stuff going on anyway from uh, county funding, um, county city funding, um, um, education, um, it, 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 it's a huge session. And so keep in, keep in watch of what's going on and, and um, don't be afraid to reach out to the legislatures and legislators and share what's happening. But um, I do think it's a, it's a huge session with mon monumental proportions possibly during this year's session. So, um, and I will tell you, we've always been blessed in Sweetwater County with um, legislators that I always felt their door was open. I may not always agree with them, but they were always willing to talk and listen and share. And so I think we should take advantage of that because not everyone always has that. So with that, if there's any questions, I'd take those. If not, that would be my report. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Commissioners, any questions for Commissioner Lloyd? Good report, thank you. Up next, Commissioner Toman. Well, Commissioner Lloyd stole my thunder on the make a wish because uh, <laughs> I also attended that <laughs> as part of my outreach and, and I was very uh, excited to see what the young people are doing. That was a very good, uh, uh, a very good, uh, what do you call it, a uh, project. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, happy to be able to be a part of that. Also, as part of my outreach, I uh, ate lunch at the Golden Hour Senior Center and got the tour so I could become more familiar with uh, what their operations are. Went to buy a book on Eden Valley history at the museum and I got the tour over there. So now I'm starting to become familiar with that entity does as, as well. So those were both very exciting and I did get to see the, the rolling uh, uh, storage rack. So that, that will be nice to help them. I suggested maybe they take some of those multiple restrooms and turn them into more storage rooms. <laughs> I think they have six bathrooms downstairs. <laughs> so that was just, that was my input on that one. Uh, we had a joint uh, purchasing meeting, the joint county city uh, liaison meeting. Uh, Marty Dernovich helped arrange that. Marty and uh, uh, Councilman uh, Barnett from Rock Springs will co-chair that group. And they were excited to start looking at uh, some opportunities. They're looking at janitorial supplies, developing a list, starting small and figuring out ways to uh, save money for all of us uh, and, and just working with the janitorial supplies. They will meet again next Monday. So. Uh, they're moving forward in a very positive way, and that was a fun group to work for. Also, my budget liaison is with uh, purchasing. Uh, let's see. Attended the coalition of local governments uh, where we hash and rehash all of the, the federal issues, uh, especially with the executive orders coming out of uh, the president's office. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I just hope we can survive that our, our mineral industries can survive, survive. And that's about all I can say right now. On the area of federal projects, uh, Commissioner Wendling and uh, Eric Bingham and I have been uh, staying on top of the Pacific Atlantic Trona, Trona Mine Project, and they will have a meeting this Thursday, and also they will have a half-day meeting, uh, I, I believe it's the 25th, uh, to... Uh, develop alternatives, a range of alternatives uh, leading towards a final decision. And they, the BLM, to their credit, they are moving pretty rapidly on that project. So um, I know the plant that is on the private property, they want to get that up and running uh, within a year. So that would be, that would be helping our tax base. Uh, another uh, federal uh, cooperator project that we have been involved in for a long time is the Ashley, Ashley National Forest Plan. And comments are due by the 15th. So I'm working with the coalition uh, attorney and also uh, Wendling and Bingham and I will probably need to have a little meeting about that because I do have a list of uh, pre-decisional um, comments that we'll be working towards. Uh, my liaison with the airport, of course, the airport and airplanes is a big exciting area for me anyway, but I think the airport is uh, 
key to the future of Sweetwater County, and we have a we have an on fire director. So I I have no doubt <laughs> I have no doubt that great things are going to continue to happen. Uh, I did the tour. I attended their board meeting and their special board meeting to approve another a bigger uh, gas pipeline, but the strategic plan for that airport is going to utilize every square inch of that 1,200 acres. So uh, I was very impressed with that and, uh, and what Devin is doing up there. Let's see. What else here? Oh, I met with the budget liaisons. I uh, contacted the sheriff. I uh, met with Marty on purchasing. I stopped in to see the issue with the 4-H with um, uh, Marty. Uh, their space really is cramped. I don't know if there's an opportunity at Golden Hour if we wanna go that way, but we might uh, discuss that with Gene. Um, the airport has already cut their budget by 30%, but he's in the multi-million dollar uh, budget category and only 300 and some thousand is gonna come from the county. So uh, keep writing those grants, Christina and Devin. <laughs> Doing a great job on that. I um, met with Sweetwater County Conservation District. I'm their budget liaison and I'm still working with uh, some of the other assignments that I had for that. Again, I can't state how, how excited I am to be in a county that is so progressive and we have some of the best the best people and the best um, facilities. You look at the hospital and I got firsthand uh, check that out yesterday, had to take my mother in there for a little bit. So I got to check that part out and uh, great service. Really, really was impressed with that facility and their equipment. Um, and again, the airport, uh, road and bridge, uh, this meeting room. I mean, the, the county is in great shape. I'll just, I just say it every time, IT, we have, we have great facilities and really great people with a, a great vision. And my final comment I'll share with the commissioners is that someone told me the other day that I think this is the first time that uh, Sweetwater County has had such a diverse visionary set of commissioners. So that was Tell interesting. Thank you. Tell them thanks on behalf, my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was directed at me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would no. make your day, Commissioner Smith. I, I, I appreciate to, that. I had to add that. Thank you. <laughs> Dynamic and diverse. Yes. That's awesome. Uh -huh. Visionary, too. Visionary. Visionary. I forgot Visionary. that one. <clears throat> I'm going to get a plaque. I'm going to get a plaque. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner Tolman? Oh, I think that would be a good closing. All right. Well, good report. <laughs> Questions for Commissioner Tolman. Okay. With that, we'll move on. I guess I'm up next. Uh, First of all, I have a thank you from uh, juvenile probation to the purchasing and maintenance. Mm -hmm. And they thank the pro juvenile probation thanks them very much for helping them move their things, I believe out of the old hospital to the HHS building. I mean, how they couldn't have gotten all their stuff moved without the support of, uh, of the maintenance and purchasing people of Sweetwater County. So that's a thank you from juvenile probation. On a couple other notes, uh, just to share with Commissioner Tolman to, to, to let you know that uh, Warden Bornesium and the county fire personnel will be working with the Ashley National Forest to help develop potential operation, you know, um, the, the deliberations which are called pods, and they are to inform fire planning on the Ashley National Forest and adjacent lands. So it's in the early stages, but uh, as Ashley moves forward talking about fire projects, um, our uh, fire warden and firefighters will be part of those conversations working with them to uh, better manage the fire end of it for the Ashley. So that's uh, um, going to be happening uh, after Commissioner or after Warden Bornesian had uh, conversations with the Ashley. Also, uh, last week, uh, or the week before, um, there's a startup of what's called the Sweetwater County Outdoor Recreation Collaborative. Um, it's a steering committee as well as stockholders that was established uh, through an effort from the Wyoming State Parks and Wyoming State Outdoor Recreation Council. And uh, we will be the third of uh, five collaborative outdoor recreation groups that will be working um, as a steering committee and stakeholders to uh, look at uh, the developments in Sweetwater County for outdoor rec, um, which uh, flows right in line with a lot of the stuff we're hearing from industry as to how can we improve our outdoor stuff. 
in a management and responsible way that'll still protect our public lands and our view sheds and stuff like that. So it's in the early stages. Um, then it'll be an open meeting. So um, as soon as I get the invites to the next meetings, I'll forward them to other commissioners. If you wish to sit in and, and listen, we do have not only uh, county core, which department people on the stakeholders um, group, but we also have them as part of the steering committee and tied to economic development. Um, also have travel and tourism involved. So this is a infant stage right now in the state of Wyoming, there are two outdoor uh, recreational collaboratives, one in Fremont County and one in Bighorn. And even as new as they are, less than two years, they have been able to move forward as a collaborative group to uh, um, um, get grant money from the feds and that to improve recreational opportunities. There's going to be a real focus uh, for recreation um, opportunities around uh, the uh, Flaming Gorge, as well as, as we know, as big as Sweetwater County is, there's also uh, the dunes and all the other areas where we recreate. Uh, um, again, it will be responsible and uh, cautious and uh, respective of our present public lands. So we'll see how that moves forward. I'll keep us informed. Also, uh, on the just a reminder that the county joint intergovernmental meeting is tomorrow night at 5:30. Um, I will come over here to the chamber's office to facilitate that meeting. If anybody wishes to join us here, we can do that, or it'll be zoomed, as you know, and we'll go from there. Um, also, just to follow up on Commissioner Lloyd's email, that the workshop for this afternoon, Commissioner Lloyd, has been canceled. Correct? Yeah, and that, I apologize for not bringing that up. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, Chairman Wendling. All right, thank you. And then with that, uh, I know it's that time of the year, and I'd like to know if there's a commissioner that would like to work with uh, the Rocket Miner on the Progress Edition for the uh, Rocket Miner. I mean, if there's not, that's okay. Then there just won't be something for the county in it this year. And that's, that isn't the first time that's happened. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Shanko. What is the cost of that? I, I believe it's free, I thought I read. Okay. But, well, you know, Sally has that information and that type of thing, so. I leaned heavily on Sally. She, I mean, she did the majority of it. I don't know if maybe we could lean on her to write something up and kind of in comparison to what we did oh. last year and then send it out. Maybe I, I can work with her and give her some ideas and work with her and, with that. And you know, one of the ideas for the progress edition of what's going on in the county and, and what's happened over the last year mm -hmm. is what's our health people have done in the county. I mean, if, if we sit and read the reports and watch them consistently coming out of the state, Sweetwater County Public Health Office with uh, the lead of Kim Leinberger on uh, vaccinations and stuff like that and uh, response to tracking and that, that's, that's been a real, real strong point and has been noted by the state. So that might be, you know, a focus on a, uh, specific county department that really has worked hard and put in long hours to facilitate where we're at. And not only that, but the good position we're at. The last email that came out from um, public health, I believe is they're starting to look at the group 6C. Yep. Yeah, which fits many people. And we've been able to use up. So I meant, I, I would just say we could have Sally you know, but if you want to work with Sally, I think that's a great idea. Okay. And I, I'll, I'll work with her if she's got any questions. Um, I think that unless anybody opposes, I really think that public health should be in the spotlight this year. So, yeah. and I agree with everything that you said. So right. I'll, I'll work with her and lean heavily on her and then we'll shoot something out to everybody um, to make sure that okay, everybody approves. Commissioner Toma. Well, maybe each commissioner could submit an idea or something like I'd like to talk about the Pacific Trona, maybe as a new opportunity, maybe just a little blurb about that. Fine. I mean, if you wish to get with Sally too, and it yeah. doesn't have to be one thing. It could be something right. mm -hmm. like, you know, that type of thing. So but we'll let you decide that. So, okay. I don't know what the details are. Can we, um, 
I'll send an email to Sally and just have her email all of us the details on how long it can be because I know that there's some specific. There's some specific. So, yeah, we'll get some details and go from there. Okay. okay. And feel comfortable, each commissioner, you know, work with Sally on it, see what we can come up. Okay. With that, uh, anything else regarding progress edition? And then I'd like to just say one thing. I, I, I know about two meetings ago, I created some consternation amongst our core, core employees. And uh, I believe my comment was, I'm very okay with reducing staff in the count courthouse for the safety of meeting the minimum needs for public safety. And after making that comment, many staff went back to their department head and said, hey, do I need to look for a job? Because they sense cuts. I should have finished that statement up with everything that I've said, I'm still a strong believer that we do not, that I, I'm only one vote, I'm only one person, but I will very much, like I said earlier during Commissioner Shanefield's comments of uh, regarding the budget is, I do not wish to be part of balancing our budget on the backs of our employees because our core employees are part of the funding that is required under statutory mandated requirements of the 12 mil. So I should have followed up with that. So I apologize to any of those employees that I created any consternation for and uh, want them to know that uh, um, moving forward, I will still maintain that stands I always have. So with that commissioners, I'll stand for any comments, questions. Commissioner Toman. Maybe that's part of uh, that comment that I made earlier about the commission. Uh, the other part of that was that we think outside of the box. <laughs> yeah, and yes, and uh, we need to continue to continue to feel it's gonna confident. It's going to take a, a lot to, of that kind of thinking to get us through. You're exactly right, Commissioner Toman. I appreciate the comment. Thank you. Anything else, commissioners? Okay, with that moving forward, I'll yield the floor to our final report, Commissioner Smith. Thank you. Appreciate the previous reports and um, much of the thunder which has been stolen. So that's awesome. <laughs> Makes mine a little bit shorter. <clears throat> but I will um, I have two letters to share today. One was uh, dis discussed last uh, commission meeting when we talked about um, uh, our school districts. And so I'll, I'll just read this letter and have it available for commissioners to sign later today. The Board of County Commissioners of Sweetwater County commend Sweetwater County School Districts number one and number two for their efforts in keeping schools open during the COVID-19 pandemic to serve the youth of our county. In particular, the commissioners recognize Superintendents Kelly McGovern and Craig Berenger, as well as their respective school boards who serve with them. Millions of students across the country have not attended classes in person since March of 2020. Over the past year, that has caused an estimable harm at two students. Because of the leadership of Superintendents McGovern and Berenger, that is not the case in Sweetwater County. Sweetwater County School Districts number one and number two put in the time and effort to research, develop, and implement a plan with the best interests of students and faculty in mind. They, are, they also demonstrated flexibility to adapt and make changes along the way. These efforts have kept students in class. The learning and social interaction that in-person classes provides cannot be overstated. A virtual platform is also provided to those students who cannot or choose not to attend in person, providing options for students and families as an incredible accomplishment. The Board of County Commissioners of Sweetwater County extend a sincere and heartfelt thank you to the excellent leadership of Sweetwater County School Districts number one and number two. Your efforts are greatly appreciated and will benefit your students for years to come. Any changes to that? Or commissioners, thoughts on the letter? You good with it? Well put, Jeff. Yeah, Excellent. well put. So, okay. With with that, uh, is that uh, ready to be sent? Put on letterhead. Yes, it is. As long as you all agree with it. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I was looking for. Okay, then I think it's very important that they put in the record that we have our support of what our school districts are doing here in Sweetwater County. So, with that, I would entertain a motion to approve the letter as presented and have it sent to uh, individual school districts. Commissioner Wendling, I Commissioner will Toman. make that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Toman to approve the letter and forward it to the school districts. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Good job, Commissioner Smith. Very, very well represented. Thank you. Thank you. Does it require any signatures? All of ours. Very good. Well, we're ready. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else on your report? You bet. Good. Let's go. More. <laughs> uh, liaison work. Board of Health. Uh, had my first meeting with them. Um, well, I had my second meeting with them, I guess. Uh, it's good fun. It's nice and early, 7, 7.15 in the morning. So get your day off to a good start. And just wanted to note that um, the county will be receiving 300 doses of the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine next week, which is a one dose, and 200 doses of the Moderna this week, as well as, uh, oh, excuse me, just 200 doses of the Moderna this week. So um, appointments are full this week, but um, they are available next week. And so you can go, you can call Public Health or Castle Rock, uh, the Community Health Center or KPAC Pharmacy in Green River as well to get vaccinated. And Walmart is also offering vaccine, but they are only doing the 1A group, so the 65 plusers, um, while the rest of the county is moving to the 1C individuals. So great work there, as mentioned before by, by Kim and her group and the board there. It's um, um, tons of work. And, and um, I, I mentioned in my conversations with her. I said, so confusing to Kim. And she said, you have no idea. So <laughs> I'm sure I have no idea. It's confusing to me. I can't imagine working with that. Uh, Southwest Counseling had my first meeting with them, had some confusion about what time it actually started. And so I got in at the tail end of it, which is awesome. I was only uh, about a half hour late and the meeting was pretty much over. So I like that. That is good. I'm going to be happy to work with that board. That's going to be excellent. <laughs> Uh, especially since it's the same day as Board of Health, which starts so early, and they uh, apparently start at 6 in the evening, not at 6.30. So it makes for a, a longish day, but a good one. Um, the hospital, um, they had their budget workshop last week and um, won't be having a regular board meeting tomorrow. Um, I, I did miss that um, budget workshop. I, I was actually at the hospital doing work <laughs> and stopped in to say hi to Irene and and um, but did miss the Zoom budget workshop, but they'll be pre presenting to us as well. Um, and then ambulance. Um, this is my second letter. Uh, tonight I'm going to be meeting with both uh, Green River City Council and the Rock Spring City Council during their regularly scheduled meetings to try to convey our um, thoughts and um, the process we're going through with the ambulance. I've had um, some great meetings with our ambulance committee that was formed in that intergovernmental um, workshop. And uh, there's been a lot of great input. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, at times has gone backwards, having been involved with this for two years now. Um, they come up with some great ideas and uh, it was things that we looked at a year and a half ago. <laughs> and so not that it can't be looked at again, but um, Kind of getting people up to speed and up to what we're trying to accomplish. So um, I would ask for your support and signatures on this letter as well as I go to the city councils tonight um, as a joint show of support of what we're trying to accomplish. If there are any, these are things that we've talked about and I think that we've discussed if there's any discussion or um, something that needs to be changed, I'd be happy to, to discuss those as well. But this is the um, letter for our good friends at the councils. So this letter is to explain the standing of the Sweetwater County Commissioners regarding ambulance service in Sweetwater County. The County Commission is no longer able to meet the financial requests made and is asking for the partnership of both the City of Rock Springs and the City of Green River to support this service. The request for funding in the 2021 budget year is over $1.2 million, which the county has funded at 100%. The county is proposing the following, a 50-50 split of the expenses between the county and the two cities. The 50% obligation of the cities will be divided two thirds to Rock Springs, one third to Green River. The current contract to provide ambulance service will expire March 31st. Without continued funding, Sweetwater Medics will not respond to 911 calls starting April 1st. 
The county understands the current financial environment and is mindful of the limits of this request during a current budget year. If the cities agree to participate in funding in the new budget year beginning July 1st, 2021, the county will continue to fund both Sweetwater Medics and Castle Rock Ambulance Services through June 30th, 2021 as a gesture of goodwill and to show a willingness to cooperate going forward. This will allow for the development of a long-term solution without an interruption of ambulance service and will allow the city's time to budget for these new expenses. Your consideration of this proposal to keep ambulance service available to all residents of Sweetwater County is appreciated. Comments on that? Comments, commissioners? Thoughts? Roy's wow. marinating. I know it. <laughs> Look at him down there. I have a question that what is that cost to keep it going for three more months? Uh, it is um, $77,000 a month to Sweetwater Medics and quick math of 348 divided by 12 <laughs> it would be whatever that is 348,000 annually to Castle Rock uh, and so finishing the three months there. Do we have it in our budget? Ha we do. Has it been budgeted? It has been budgeted, yes. But if uh, if there's not an agreement to go forward with funding in July, there's no reason to prolong the agony. We'll just end it in on uh, on April first, March thirty first. So that's that's the hope of. I understand, and so trying to tell the city, say we understand that you are. Um, in a current budget cycle and it's not a great one. So um, we have budgeted for it. If there's an agreement, then we will we'll, we'll float it until you can start paying on July 1st. If you decide not to participate in that, then there's no use in us going forward with it. No reason to keep it around until July 1st. Um, we will end our funding as we have said already on March 31st when we um, previously ended our contract. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, um, just a, a thought. I, I, I know we would probably move toward m making a vote, but I do know this could be for discussion and executive, if I'm not com under contracts, if I'm not mistaken. And before I move forward, I'd like to have some of that discussion. Um, um, uh, my concern in this matter is I, I, I stand strong that we, we need, we should not have to shoulder the burden of this entire contract, but I also have concern that if we don't, uh, we may have to look at moves, otherwise we won't have ambulance service, whether it's our responsibility or not for an entire city. And so I think before I move forward on the letter, I'd like to have that, we'll have our discussion and executive about contracts, if that's fine. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. I'm seeing some nods ahead that uh, I was going to uh, request that uh, if at all possible, I mean, it's not an agenda item, but you know, it's a support letter, um, but we can hold off until after executive session and have some conversation because it, it still goes into the contract arena. And uh, then after coming out of executive session, we could move on the letter or not move on it. Um, before we go too far, I would ask uh, our Deputy County Attorney, Mr. DeLeon, if, if that's uh, a practice or a procedure that we could use today for that. I think it's appropriate. Appropriate. Mr. Chairman, yeah. Thank you very much for that. So with that, Commissioner Smith, uh, from my standpoint, very, very good letter. And I, I think we um, need to digest it so we're all on the same page as commissioners and we can do that in executive session under contracts and then coming out of executive session we can either act or not act on the letter is that okay perfect yes perfect thank all right you thank you good letter though very very well written thanks uh that's the sad ending to my report i should have switched those around an ambulance first in the school district last <laughs> and a little happier note <laughs> messed that up in my production of my all right. of my uh, commissioner report so that's my report that's your report good report uh commissioners any questions for commissioner smith i guess i have to take that thinking out of the box back huh yeah there you go there you go there you go 
anyhow, with that, uh, that concludes our commission reports and moving on to our action items, which our first one would be is a solid waste, waste district appointment. Commissioners, at this time, I'd like to take a, a 15 minute break, come back at uh, oh, 10, 10 oh, let's just say 10 o'clock. That would be a 12 minute break. Come back at 10 o'clock and resume our meeting. So, well, thank you.
Okay, I'll call this meeting back to order. And as we move forward, our next agenda item is the uh, Solid Waste Disposal District Number One Board appointment. And uh, I guess I'm not on it as quick as I thought I would. I gotta log back in. We should have taken but a couple more minutes. We could have, but I'm there. I am there, friends. Oh, no. Yes, sir. Okay. First, we have an, uh, two board vacancies for the um, Solid Waste District Disposal um, District 1 in Rock Springs. And they're due to expiring terms of Randy Foster and Tim Sheehan. First of all, before we move on, I would like to thank those individuals for the time and uh, effort that they've contributed to uh, making the Solid Waste District as successful as it is today. And uh, want to many times I've reached out to them and uh, they've been available and had great conversations, but I truly wanna thank them for their services on the Solid Waste Disposal District number one in Rock Springs and uh, hope that as they move forward that uh, everything goes smoothly for them. So with that, we do have applicants. Um, the applicants that we do have um, are Steve O'Brien, Tammy Valdez, Charlotte Doak, Crystal Holler, Celeste Black, um, J. Andrew Hall, and we do have another applicant, which is Rick Kozad. So with that, commissioners, uh, we've uh, had time, to, I hope we've had time to review those. Uh, is there any discussion amongst each other as to uh, what their preference may be. And I think maybe what we'll do is um, we'll start with Commissioner Lloyd. Do you uh, have anything to say regarding this, these appointments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, is, are, who's the liaison to this or do we have a liaison? There's, there's no liaison. Okay, um, I'll be honest. Uh, none of the applications really had extra information about the individual. Um, the only individuals I really even personally know are Tammy Valdez, Charlotte Doak, Crystal Holler and Rick Kozad. Um, I don't know any of the other individuals that have applied and there's no information in the packet that would differentiate anything. So um, I would feel comfortable with any of those four um, filling uh, those positions, um, but I'm not opposed to anyone else that so people may have better relationships or knowledge of. All right, thank you. Moving down the line, uh, Commissioner Toman, any? Thoughts? Well, yes. Uh, first, we should see if any of them are available to speak to us today. And I think in the future, we should invite them to come and, and explain why they want to be on a board, why they think they have the qualifications. I know they can do a summary and it takes more time, but I would personally like to have an opportunity to visit with people who are appointed. Well, and, and yeah, and I, in, in many cases, we have that opportunity because we can call and visit with them personally. Mm -hmm. and talk with them and see what their interests are and that type of thing. Uh, I do know in many cases, as uh, we do with our regular liaison work, uh, the liaisons will talk with the chairman of the board or the chairman of the board may reach out to us in some cases, uh, knowing who the applicants are and that type of thing. But uh, as I look at the screen, I don't believe any invite was sent to them to, to join. But uh, um, as we move forward, we can consider that. Thank you, Mr. Shanefield. Um, yes, so I was reached out to by the chairperson um, of the district board and um, his recommendation, I didn't actually speak with him, um, but he left me a voicemail and his recommendation was um, Rick Kozad, Andrew Hall or Steve O'Brien um, were his, his um, in his opinion. He didn't state why. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Lloyd, there wasn't a lot of information. I know all of the applicants personally, but I also don't know how they would, or why they would feel like they would be qualified to, you know, I think that that's important mm -hmm. for us to know. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. I did have opportunity to speak with RJ and had the same recommendations as well. Um, and so my recommendation would be for uh, Steve O'Brien and Richard Kozad um, to fill those positions. Very good, thank After you. My conversations with them. Yeah, and uh, I as well did reach out and talked with uh, um, RJ and uh, I've been kind of watching what's been going on with solid waste and uh, attending a few meeting, meetings and talking with the mayors and that. And uh, as this uh, moves forward, there's some 
big challenges ahead for solid waste as uh, we move forward because of, uh, of course, a lot of it has to do with revenue and then also has to do with uh, the desires in the two cities where one is part of the solid waste and one is not. Uh, one does do recycling um, through a contract with waste management, that being Green River. The other one works with the um, Lovato Recycling Center through Rock Springs and that. But also uh, the uniqueness of it is we're gonna need some strong individuals as we move forward to uh, basically lead um, that uh, district rather than be led. And uh, with that saying, uh, I have also looked at, uh, talked with the uh, um, chairman of the uh, district and, uh, and he, he as well, we, we also talked about uh, Mr. Hall um, as being on there, part of it. And right now, as it stands, we have uh, Larissa, can't think of her name, on there. And she is a science teacher from Rock Springs High School, environmental. And I believe Mr. Hall is also a teacher at Rock Springs High School. And as, as much as I think he'd be a really, really great addition, without a doubt, we put two board members in the same um, arena where they're working together all the time and that. So it concerns me that uh, we uh, may set that board up for something that Mr. Maybe Chairman, not. You'd, you'd fill every board position with educators if you could, I think. So you're right. You're right. But this is <laughs> good <one>. quality folks. <laughs> they are. They're very good quality folks. But I think for the best of the county, we, you know, we'd be very careful um, where those uh, individuals are, I think, uh, and that type of thing. So a good cross section, um, I think, for that board would to be support the uh, chairman's recommendations of Richard Kozad or Steve O'Brien. So Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Shainfield. Um, Mr. Chairman, I am unsure of this. I'm just looking at the dates that some of these were received. Um, and Steve O'Brien's was received in March of 2019. Um, I just, and I know like Tammy's was as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I just had a concern about the timing is if anything has changed with them. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're on for two years, I think we keep yeah. on to them, but we're at, Two years. So, yeah. and you know that was one of the things is I believe uh, um, they're under the wire when I say they're still active because that that two year period now there may be an opportunity that we appoint somebody and all of a sudden which has happened even new applicants they've said hey I've rethought this and don't want to do it and then we have to go back and fill again so that could happen. But as it is, you know, um, Miss Sally does a really great job of watching the expiration dates and she um, tries to make sure that we only have active applicants and that means within two years. Okay, Mr. Smith. I think I can add to that um, from my discussion with RJ that those, uh, all three of those are still interested and active. Okay. It's Thank not you. as though they applied two years ago and forgot about it. He's talked with them recently and they are still on board. So thank you for that question, Mr. Smith. Okay, anything else, commissioners? With this, commissioners, what's your pleasure for the uh, appointments to the uh, Solid Waste District number one board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Smith. I move that we appoint Stephen O'Brien and Richard Kozad to the Solid Waste Disposal District number one. Okay, we have a motion to appoint uh, Rick, Rick Kozad and Stephen Martin to Waste District. O'Brien, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, O'Brien to uh, Solid Waste District one. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Tolman. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. So congratulations to those two individuals for their appointment to Sweetwater County or Rock Springs Disposal District number one. Thank you. With that, moving, moving on. Thank you, commissioners. Um, we have the uh, abandoned vehicle lot and uh, to present that I believe is the uh, sheriff and as well as I think uh, commissioner or two have been involved in 
surveying that. So uh, with that, uh, uh, Sheriff Grossnickel, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I will at this time turn the floor over to you. What I'll probably do at this time is is uh, lean on uh, Deputy County Attorney John DeLeon to uh, give you the two options that we've come up with uh, in reference to the abandoned vehicle uh, lot that the county has been paying rent on. Okay, thank you, Sheriff. I'll yield the floor to uh, Mr. DeLeon. Mr. DeLeon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Com Commissioner Smith has uh, been part of the uh, discussions on the abandoned vehicles as well. But before you essentially, uh, you, have, you have the commission has two options uh, with regard to the abandoned uh, vehicle lot uh, option uh, in, I guess, in no particular order. But uh, one option is to uh, vacate the abandoned vehicle lot uh, by March 30th, uh, 2021. That was the uh, request that was made by auto recyclers uh, in the letter that they presented. Um, uh, if that is um, the choice that uh, the commission prefers, uh, you would make that motion. A letter has been prepared um, and you would authorize the chairman to sign that document. Um, option number two uh, is that auto recyclers has presented, uh, in addition to that option, they have presented um, uh, the option to have a lease agreement. Uh, that lease agreement would, um, would be the uh, normal $400 uh, per month uh, rent that has been in place for, uh, he identified 40 years. Uh, in addition to the $400, um, Auto Recyclers is asking that uh, the commission um, pay for or uh, clean up the lot in terms of having vehicles moved, having snow removed, having um, the weeds uh, picked up, uh, that those would all be the responsibility of the county, uh, whether that's through road and bridge, whether it's through the sheriff's office. Uh, if the county did want to have um, auto recyclers take care of that responsibility, they could, they would charge $100 per hour for equipment used. They would charge $50 per hour uh, uh, per person uh, to, to provide any cleanup uh, as, as was necessary. So those, those essentially are the options before the, before the, um, before the board. Uh, in preparation for both options, the sheriff uh, has um, prepared to have a, uh, a location for the vehicles to be removed uh, and to be stored and kept for future abandoned vehicle purposes and to have the lot cleaned up by the time frame requested by auto recyclers. And I think the sheriff can expand on the uh, location uh, that the vehicles would be kept if that was in fact the choice of the board. Okay. Thank you, Mr. DeLeon. Uh, John, you heard all that. Uh, you in line with the two options? Sheriff? That's correct. And, and the contingency on the second one, if the uh, commission decides to vacate the premises of auto recyclers is to move it out to our complex. Um, we were in contact with Mr. Ligurski. He was on board. We have the room for that and the facility to do that. Just some back history on that. It obviously would be free of charge uh, to store the vehicles. Uh, we'd be able to, to maintain it as far as any weed abatement and things of that nature. Uh, and additionally, we have a plan that would also generate revenue for the county along with the cost savings. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, with that, I'll yield the floor to Commissioner Smith and see if he has anything else to add, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate the great work that's gone in with this. Uh, uh, Mr. DeLeon perhaps overstates my 
uh, involvement. <laughs> Much has gone on. Yes, I have participated, but uh, there's been a lot of hard work by a lot of others uh, besides me. So that is appreciated. And um, as the, as Sheriff Grossnickel just pointed out, the county taking over, being able to store, um, and the savings that comes along with that, as well as um, the revenue that uh, will be generated, while modest, it's uh, it is still revenue, and we'd love to have that, especially in this time of uh, budget crisis. So that would be my recommendation. Having been involved with this, is to abandon the lot and and make the move over to the the justice complex, um, as presented earlier. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, with that. Uh, um, what we'll do first is uh, let's let's see if there's any questions regarding um, either option. And first option that is see if there's any questions uh, the commissioners may have for uh, either Sheriff Grossnickel or our Deputy Attorney Mr. De Leon, or they could be for Commissioner Smith. Is let's first of all uh, question the the uh, option B, which would be to sign a lease agreement with auto recyclers for the abandoned vehicle lot. So any questions there, commissioners, for uh, Commissioner Smith or Commissioner Grossnickel, I'm not sorry, Sheriff Grossnickel or Deputy Attorney John DeLeon? Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Commissioner Lloyd. Is that even an option? Because the letter from auto, Recy um, auto recyclers actually says that the lease is not signed by 228, 2021, it is not valid and the information we receive. So um, is it even an option? Because if we chose to go that way, today is 3 to 2021 and would that be even a valid option at this point? It would have to be investigated, you're right. Yes, sir. Mr. DeLeon? I, I agree that, it, I, you know, I think the Liggetts have worked with the county for a substantial period of time. I think they've expressed, uh, and I think their goal is to be moving forward to know which direction the county would like to go uh, so I think that it's something that could be investigated as the chairman identified. Uh, it couldn't be decided today without the approval of the legates, but it is something that the commission could, if you wanted to choose that direction, it, um, it's something that could be presented to the legates with the modification of the date. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, commissioners? No, the one question I'd have is if we approve uh, to move into a lease agreement, there would be costs to the county to uh, maintain that lease agreement. Is that correct? That's correct. It would be it would be more than has been the case in the past. It would be the four hundred dollars um, that ha was the normal agreement, uh, and it would include maintenance fees, uh, and it would also have. Uh, there are a lot of different um, caveats that are contained in the in the terms of the agreement that is in your packet. Um, so yeah, it is, um, that option uh, does have more costs associated with, with it than the option where the county uh, takes on that responsibility. Okay, thank you. Other questions regarding option B, which would be to sign a lease agreement with auto recyclers. Okay, let's move into questions on, mo on uh, option A, which would be to vacate the abandoned vehicle lot by March 30th, 2021, as requested by auto recyclers. Questions? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shanefield. I don't have a question, just a comment. I mean, I think in during times being tight and us looking at all budgets that we have to move in this direction and save the county some money. Um, we have the space available and the ability to take care of it ourselves, so. Thank you, Commissioner Shanefield. Other co comments or questions, commissioners, for either Deputy Attorney John DeLeon, Sheriff Grossnickel, or Commissioner Smith? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Sorry to butt in, but um, I wasn't aware of, um, no one has spoken to me about moving an impound yard to the jail that would require a conditional use permit. And the soon as we could hear that would be in April if I received an application today. Uh, not to rain on everybody's parade, but just just so you're aware. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. Commissioners, any comments? Thank you, Eric, for joining us. I appreciate that. Commissioners, no questions? Anything to add, Sheriff? 
I, at this point, I don't, again, I would, I would defer to uh, Deputy County Attorney De Leon as far as moving forward um, and the, the contract portion of this. Uh, I know what, I'm sure he knows what I'm referring to. I don't know if that needs to be dealt with in executive session or how we proceed with that also, just so the commission's aware of uh, what the overall plan and goal is. When you talk about the contract, Sheriff, are you talking under uh, option B? I'm talking under the uh, option of moving it out here to uh, the justice facility and the plan that we have to move forward. Mr. De Leon. Mr. Chairman, so one of the things that I, I would say was in part of this uh, process that was um, looked into was if there were, um, there's a lot of interest. Um, sometimes in these areas, you, you don't know if there are several different entities that are willing to help uh, the county out in these processes. Uh, and uh, the sheriff uh, or uh, Commissioner Smith can certainly uh, speak to the idea uh, as, as they um, see the facts. But I think, I think that um, the process um, discovered that there were uh, different entities that were uh, willing to help and participate in the process. So while um, the commission can certainly um, put a third option on the table, the commission can uh, wait, uh, can, can table uh, the matter uh, uh, for the next meeting to have a conversation with, the, uh, with auto recyclers to see if they would be okay with extending uh, the time frame. Uh, the uh, or even modifying uh, giving uh, the chairman the authority to uh, sign uh, a uh, termination uh, letter with the uh, flexibility to modify the date uh, on there if the ligates, uh, if auto recyclers is amenable to that idea. Um, otherwise, I think there are a couple of uh, options out there in terms of temporary storage locations, uh, in terms of other businesses that have expressed a willingness to uh, um, assist the county. So I think that the commission um, does have uh, both options uh, and a third option available to it today, um, uh, the idea of tabling the idea of adding flexibility to the, uh, um, the vacation date uh, if, the, uh, if auto recyclers is open to that idea. So I think that the concerns that um, are uh, our uh, beloved land use director identified can be accounted for. Beloved, wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> in all of that <laughs> there he is eric you have anything to say can't hear you you're muted you're muted eric you're muted i was on i was in a conversation i apologize i missed the last part of that what john said he just said i heard the right. beloved though that that part <laughs> that i liked part. <laughs> that was the only important thing okay sounds good <laughs> no just Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Sheriff Grossnickel. Just so Eric can answer this with that permit, and, and we don't have an issue doing that, but that permit is also required, even though this falls under the duties of the sheriff as far as abandoned vehicles. Yeah, as far as I know, just under the state statutes for st impound yards, my only question is, Sheriff Grossnickel, do you know are you guys exempt from the state from getting permits for, for the impound yard? That would be a quest. That's for an impound salvage yard or storage yard, sorry. I would have to defer that to my legal representation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is your legal representation much beloved though? <laughs> is, is that Sheriff Grossnickel referring that is to the entire office of the county attorney or is that our county <laughs> deputy attorney, Mr. DeLeon? 
I would refer that to Mr. DeLeon, but if the rest of them would like to help, I have no issue with that either. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, county attorney, Mr. Chairman, so or assistant county attorney. That, yeah, that's a, uh, I, I would have to look into that. I don't, I don't have that answer. So we, we would have to see if there is a, an exception um, to uh, requiring a storage and or um, any permit through land use. So. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Toma. Well, in the interest of time, it sounds like if Mr. DeLeon agrees that we table the issue and leave it up to staff to uh, determine what they do on the interim and uh, legal can check out the conditional use permit requirement. You, uh, Commissioner uh, Toman, uh, Mr. Chairman, so you can table it if you'd like. You can also, uh, you still have the option of, um, of choosing one of the other two options with a modification to the date, uh, understanding that there are um, methods to address the concerns either through extending the date uh, beyond March 30th. Uh, there's the option of, of having another uh, entity uh, assist in that process between uh, March 30th and the April hearing uh, that would allow for a conditional use permit. So I think that you can move forward today with any of the three options that you would like. Questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, a question. Um, Mr. DeLeon, if we were to go to um, look at other um, um, yards as a side or options if you mentioned would that have to go through a bidding process or anything or would we how would that process work and what would be the time frames so the sheriff's office did a great job at uh beginning the clearing out process to the lot that's out there now they have substantially reduced the amount of vehicles that are out there uh the lot would have to essentially be cleared by the 30th uh, according to the current uh, set of ideas. So there wouldn't be that many vehicles needed. There wouldn't be that much storage required. And so when you're talking about communicating with another entity or auto recyclers, you're not talking about that many vehicles needing to be stored for one month period. So uh, no, the, the, the short answer to your question is no. The, uh, the detailed answer is there's not that many vehicles that are required uh, to, to be, uh, this is one of those areas that there is not a requirement that a bidding process, as we've discovered in other areas, uh, required it to be done. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Answered? Other questions? Can I make a motion, Mr. Chairman? Um, yeah, I, I, th I think it'd be a good time and then we can have a little more discussion if we need it. Okay. Well, I move that we um, vacate the abandoned vehicle lot uh, as requested by auto recyclers and approve the chairman to sign, but also approve the chairman to uh, negotiate any flexibility in that abandonment date with the, um, with the Liggetts and also pursue other storage options if the Liggetts are not amenable to allowing us an extension before we vacate. Very good. Did everybody hear that motion real clear? Because I'm not going to try to second. repeat it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Smith and a second. Further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, a comment to make it possible? Sure. I just think we should um, um, extend um, our thanks out to the Liggetts um, because for for years, they um, they have stored their vehicles without a formal contract. Um, their points have caused difficulties within their own business within storage of some of the vehicles and and i'd like them to know that um i've appreciated everything they've done to support the county over the last how many years it's been a number of years and wow. um and and i would probably be personally willing to continue that contract if there wasn't an option of a cheaper concept in our in our future um with possibly the uh, the, the sheriff's yard but i do think we need to commend them and thank them for their their time and their 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 assistance with that Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. I would wholeheartedly second that. Okay, that wasn't well. a motion, but we'll I know. support it. We'll all support <laughs> those comments. No use regurgitating them. Yes, well, Commissioner I just Coleman. have a point of 
clarification. Uh, Commissioner Smith, are you saying we're going to vacate the auto recycler lot, but what are you saying about pursuing the county detention center lot? Uh, yes, we will yes. do that. That was part of your motion then, yeah. right? Yeah, just, just for clarity. As soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, just for clarity's sake, move forward with the letter. And we know we have to wait for uh, um, a conditional use permit or check into the legalities of needing it to move it out to the sheriff's office. Although during that time after March 31st, if we have to wait, um, we have the option to, you've off, the option's been offered for the chairman to, to negotiate with the legates, with uh, the sheriff and the deputy county attorney and or uh, make arrangements for uh, after the 30th, if uh, the legates say, no, we're done, then uh, make arrangements to get us through that uh, temporary period until we get the conditional use permit taken care of. Does that make sense, Mr. Smith? Absolutely. Everybody aboard? All right, call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Thank you, commissioners. Good discussion, good catch for everybody. I appreciate Eric coming aboard and reminding us that uh, us too need to abide by state <laughs> statute. All right, with that, moving on to tab G, which is resolution um, 21-03-CC-01, which is authorization of a special prosecutor. Um, to present that is our deputy attorney, Mr. De Leon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you all are aware, um, uh, from time to time in the um, county attorney's uh, role as um, uh, criminal prosecutor, uh, he can become aware of a case that uh, through review that requires review and potential prosecution that uh, has the potential for either a conflict of interest or the potential for a conflict of interest. Uh, in such case, and in this case, uh, outside counsel uh, will be sought. And um, in this case, uh, the county attorney for Johnson County has agreed to uh, take on that uh, review and potential prosecution role at no charge to the county. Um, this appointment of a special prosecutor does require the approval of the board. Uh, and as such, we would ask you to consider a motion to approve the resolution to appoint uh, a special prosecutor for the, uh, for the special prosecution. Okay, thank you, Deputy Attorney. Questions for Mr. De Leon, commissioners? No questions, rather straightforward. Commissioners, your, your uh, pleasure regarding resolution Number 21-03-CC-01, authorizing the appointment of a special prosecutor. Make a motion to Commissioner approve. Commissioner Toman. I'll make a second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner uh, Shanefield. I have a second by Commissioner Toman. Any further discussion? Just note that there's no cost to the county. No. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, commissioners. Moving forward, we have up next tab H, which is Brown Bag Concert Series MOU. And with us today is Mr. Ligurski, our Public Works Director. Mr. Ligurski, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Wonderful. How about you? We're we're here today. How about that? <laughs> it sounds great. Um, so what you have before you is the city of. Uh, rock springs contacted me last year and with the first security bank building renovation they typically have their brown bag concert series in bank court they weren't able to have that because of all the construction making it dangerous they moved it over to the grassy area at the hhs building um, and they would like to do that again this year i talked to kim lionberger and she doesn't seem to mind um, it out there it's for a very short time um, you know an hour and a half on tuesdays i believe um you know june july and august basically so um, if everybody's amenable to that, uh, we usually provide them power um, or access to the power from the building. And, uh, you know, they make sure they clean up and do it. And they did a great job last year. Thank you, Mr. Gursky. 
Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Gligurski? No questions. What's your pleasure regarding the MOU for the Brown Bank? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Lloyd. I'd move to approve the Brown Bank Concert Series MOU at the City of Rock Springs and, and approve the chairman to sign all necessary documents. We have a motion to approve and authorize the chairman. Is there a second? Second. Oh. Second by Commissioner Toman. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Ligurski. You might as well stay with us because you're up next with an MOU between Sweetwater County and the Sweetwater County Events Complex for water usage. Mr. Ligurski, the floor is yours. Um, but this is just an MOU between us and uh, the uh, Sweetwater Events Complex for water usage at a specific place um, at their facility. Um, it just we promise to make sure that we take care of it and coordinate with them. Um, there's no money or anything associated with it. I think it's just getting in writing so everybody knows um, what to expect. We do use water from time to time out there, depending on if we have something going on north of town. Um, you know, for various dust control projects and and anything like that, running around putting rotor mill down. Um, you know, we've even used it to haul water to fires um, out there. So um, it's a good option for us instead of running back to this side of town. It, makes our cycle times a lot faster. Thank you, Mr. Ligurski. Uh, questions from commissioners for Ms. Ligurski? John, MOU look good? Yep, it's pretty straightforward. And as Mr. Ligurski identified, it's pretty much just uh, asking uh, the county to, to communicate with the events complex. Very good, thank you. With that, commissioners, what's your pleasure regarding this MOU with Sweetwater County and the Sweetwater County Events Complex? I have a question, Chairman. Oh, sure. Commissioner Toman, I'll <laughs> go back to questions. Is this well water from uh, uh, the Events Complex? It's not city water, right? It's well water. Yeah. Okay. Good catch. All right. Any other questions? <clears throat> commissioners, your pleasure regarding this MOU. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Shane, Phil. Make a motion to approve the MOU between Sweetwater County and the Sweetwater County Events Complex and allow, um, authorize the chairman to sign all necessary documents. Okay, we have a motion to approve and authorize the chairman to sign documents. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Toman. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very much, commissioners. As we move forward to tab J, tab J, we have a events complex use of park facilities for events discussed for events. And this is with uh, Mr. McLean and Mr. Ligurski again. And is Mr. Lloyd on this morning from the events complex? Oh. I don't see him. So I'll turn the floor over to, um, mm, let's go with uh, either Mr. McLean or Mr. Ligurski, go ahead. I don't see Gary up there on. So Gene, would you like to take this? Could you? Um, I can. Um, Sorry, Mr. Gary. I, I couldn't uh, hear the audio there for a second. So. All right, Gene, we'll refer back to um, Mr. McLean, okay? Mr. Chairman, uh, County Commissioners, uh, before you is a request, uh, or we had discussed um, oh, some years ago the possibility of uh, using various park facilities around the county um, to host events. Um, and, um, and during the recent budget discussions, um, we had brought this issue up again. Um, Commissioner Lloyd, uh, Gene Gersky and I met with the events complex uh, to uh, discuss whether there was any interest or the possibility. Um, what <clears throat> we've been looking at specifically is that most of the year, several of the parks, in fact, many of the parks are hardly used. And the question is, uh, especially during COVID where the events complex was unable to host uh, revenue generating events within their facilities because of the restrictions on group size and other things, 
um, was what, whether they could host uh, events using uh, some of the park facilities. Um, and so um, the idea was that um, as opposed to facilities that are just cost creators, that maybe those facilities could become uh, uh, revenue generators and help offset the costs of maintenance and also the cost uh, to host those events from the events complex and, and uh, become more of an asset than a liability. <clears throat> when we uh, met with the events complex, um, one of the areas in particular, uh, that they thought that that was a good idea. One of the things that they um, could see opportunity for was when they had large events, say um, the motor carrier uh, events or the high school finals rodeo or similar large events um, that the parks may become um, other uh, events during those larger events. Um, so one of the things that, that was discussed is the shooting sports uh, park, specifically the trap club, um, because of COVID and some of the restrictions on having large uh, events like high school funds rodeo, um, they've been hosting smaller events, uh, just like the shooting portion of the event. Uh, when the high school finals rodeo were here, they had um, um, a lot of compliments about the trap club facilities for those events and believed that some smaller events could be scheduled at places like the trap club. Um, the trap club um, is a nice facility for those of you that have been there, you know what I'm talking about, um, but the utilization of it has, has been fairly low. Um, as far as the, you know, other parks, there's some parks that are used for, um, um, soccer and baseball or softball and, and other venues. Um, but they thought that if there was some commitment, they would be able to schedule some events using those parks. So we thought we'd come today. There's a lot of issues about how this could work and who's managing and what happens to revenues and, and, and things like that. But if the board were interested in, in pursuing this, then, then we could, you know, try to work out some of those details. If not, then you know, we move on to other things that, that uh, may assist uh, with the budget shortfalls that have been discussed. Um, so in short, that's how we got here. Um, just trying to turn over every stone in terms of ways to deal with the uh, discussed budget shortfalls. And this is one of the areas um, where it seems like there's some opportunities. Thank you, Gary. Um, Mr. Ligers, you have anything to add? Um, the only thing I have to add is this kind of dovetails into uh, the meeting that um, Eric's one of the, the the founding Eric and Mark caught with the outdoor recreation, um, you know, and how to promote that in Southwest Wyoming. Um, I think we're missing out on an opportunity when we have people that come in, stay at the events complex, and we don't push them out to why we enjoy Southwest Wyoming. You know, and part of that is the parks. Um, you know, we don't point them in that direction. Um, to be honest with you, we don't do a very good job of promoting our parks. Um, I'm not a promoter. Chris Bradford's not a promoter. Um, the events complex does that very well. And that's kind of how all this has started. And if we can get people, you know, maybe for a day to go down and um, do some stuff or maybe, you know, launch a boat from the um, the county park in Jamestown or, you know, do stuff like that. I think it it attracts more people and it, it shows off our outdoor experience that we have here. So that that's kind of my my take on everything. Thank you, Mr. Ligurski. Uh with that, I also see uh, Mr. Bingham up there with planning and zoning, and I know um, as a few of us are on this uh, agenda item uh, involved with outdoor rec now um, and that type of thing for collaborative, Eric. I know you're part of it. And th I first of all want to thank you and Gene for jumping aboard as stakeholders as well as uh, um, steering committee members. Um, what's, what's your take on this request, Eric? I, I think it's a great thing. When I was on the rec board for six years, uh, a couple of years as chairman, that was some of the issues that we ran in. Uh, and Gene's exactly right. We do not, we've not done a good job of promoting our parks. A lot of people are not aware of some of the opportunities that are out there. Some of the issues that have come up with people that have, that have tried to run events, um, you know, the insurance and things like that always had seemed to come up and would discourage people from holding them. So having somebody like the something like the events complex uh, host things like that and bring those out to those parks is a great thing. Um, and any way we can get that uh, usership up is a good thing. So yeah, I, I definitely see a great opportunity with this um, moving forward. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Eric. Uh, anything more to add, Mr. McLean, Mr. Ligursky? No, I think we're just looking at whether this is something to pursue. Obviously, there's lots of details. Uh, Eric alluded to some of those with insurance, cost sharing, uh, management of events, and and other things. But um, if if there's interest in pursuing it, they're all things that we have the the wherewithal internally to address. Um, but if if that's not something the board wants to pursue, then obviously we have other. Uh, pressing matters to tackle, but it seems like there's an opportunity to be worked out there. Thank you, Mr. McLean. With that, uh, commissioners, I'll open the floor up for questions for either Mr. McLean, Mr. Ligurski, or Mr. Bingham. Commissioners, Commissioner Shanefield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have a question. I just a comment. I want to say thank you to everybody that's looking into these things that you know maybe we haven't needed to do as much but will make our community better and bring revenue in and keep bringing people into our community um, and thank you Commissioner Lloyd for moving this forward I appreciate it it's good good stuff okay thank you Commissioner's other comments yeah just one quick comment and then I think something that um Gene Eric and I have talked about is um I think this is a great opportunity as we look at budget cuts we haven't really talked a lot about how do we increase it? How do we increase funding? And this is a great concept to do that. And like Gene said, we take great care of the parks. We have great parks, but we don't promote it. That's not what we are. And the events complex has a proven track record of event, um, event success. And I think this is a great partnership that could help. And I think this could even lead us to a bigger position as we go into strategic planning. And this is what G Gene, I, and Eric, uh, Gene, I, and, um, and um, and uh, Gary have talked about us a little bit. We can even start to reimagine our parks. We have lots of parks, but some don't really get a lot of use. Is this a point to say, hey, it would be great to have this kind of a park in Sweetwater County that focused on this? And I know there could be some costs involved eventually, but this is a great time to start looking at those bigger pictures for quality of life and events. And and I really think it's a great partnership. Thank you, Commissioner. Other comments, questions, or questions? I don't see too many so where I believe I think we're at is uh, basically to give you the nod to go ahead and continue working forward is that moving forward is that correct Gary yeah obviously this is just at the concept stage and if we're going to move ahead there's a number of things that would have to be resolved um, we know there may be some restrictions on the RMPP leases we have to finish reviewing those um, you know, there's some kind of agreement to how this, you know, would be happening, some liability management, some details, obviously, that would have to be done there. But the, the thought process was, I think, kind of the consensus was maybe let's pick a park or event or two this year and see if we can work through those in a limited way and then see if, we, you know, once we've done that, how and if that makes sense to expand that. Thank you, Gary. Well, commissioners, I think what uh, I'm hearing is... Uh, do we desire to move forward with this concept? And if we do, it's just a matter of a consensus head nod to say, move forward. I think we've got a 100% in agreement in moving forward. So Gary, Gene, and Eric, we'll leave it in your laps and look forward uh, to things to come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, thank you. Appreciate your work and taking the lead and working with the commissioners and moving forward. So with that, uh, is there, uh, we'll move forward with our agenda. Thank you guys, appreciate it, be safe. Next up is, uh, I believe we have uh, tab K, which is a request approval to restaff vacant position in the road and bridge department. And still at the table with us is uh, Mr. Ligurski and Mr. McLean. So Mr. McLean, you wanna take the lead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners. Um, we had a, a recent uh, vacancy in the road and bridge department uh, for an equipment operator position. Um, for you is a request to staff that position and the costs associated uh, with that. Um, as the board knows, um, uh, back in July, the board adopted a uh, hiring increase um, and provided some criteria uh, for reviewing uh, vacancies. Uh, I'm gonna provide a few high level points and then I'll, I'll let Gene uh, speak to some more of the detailed issues. Um, just, just for the board's edification, we had two uh, uh, early retirement uh, in the road and bridge department this year, um, which we have not filled. Since uh, 2000, 
in 10. Uh, well, in 2010, we had 35 employees in the department. We currently have 23. Um, and so we've, over the course of early retirements, um, not filling vacancies and other things have reduced um, the staff of the Road and Bridge Department from 35 to 23 at a cost savings of just a little bit if you use today's dollars, well, about $1.2 million. <clears throat> um, right now, uh, we're looking at about 14 uh, blades, six end dumps and six belly dumps and approximately 1,200 miles of road. Um, over, uh, really not recently, over the past couple of years, we've looked at um, a variety of, of cost-saving options, and I'll just touch on a few of those that we've addressed. One um, that's been a, a, a great success, which is a partnership with Climb Wyoming. Um, we had a great experience with them last year that gives us some part-time help in the summer, it gets exposure uh, and experience to um, uh, folks that are trying to uh, improve their own lives and get into a field they might not otherwise get into. And, and that's been a great success. We uh, did that last year. They uh, compensated us for two months of that program. And um, those folks worked out well. And, and we plan on doing that again this year and have even talked uh, with them about some uh, additional partnerships. Um, we've used some past employees to fill in in areas, especially like Farson, where we have one operator and some other areas when we have people out on surgery and vacancies. Um, we have a small amount of money that's used um, to, to try to, um, to address uh, those types of issues. Um, and then in addition to that, um, um, I know that uh, Gene's talked with a number uh, of contractors and a number of contractors have been used in areas uh, to haul dirt, um, to strengthen our ability to move large quantities. Uh, we've used them for some specialized snow removal options, especially in the Wonset area uh, last year, the year before, I believe. Um, and so um, I think one of the areas in, here and in terms of, you know, sort of the overall service level is we have such huge amounts of road, many of which um, are large revenue gen generating roads, meaning their access to uh, Trona mines, coal mines, oil and gas fields uh, and things like that is just trying to determine what level uh, of service um, the, this board and the community is comfortable with. Um, during this time of reducing the staff, um, we've added, I think about 80 miles of road through agreements with the Forest Service. So we haven't cut roads. We've actually added approximately 80 miles and Gene, correct me if I'm far off on that, but <clears throat> Um, so in addition to cutting, we've added miles of road and, and I think, you know, improved a, a quality uh, service. But the question is, where do we want to go with that? Um, and I think that's kind of the difficult part at this point. But I think largely we've used um, and followed most of the criteria that are in there. One of the things that I would point out, just analysis that we did uh, uh, for the cost of a full time employee, um, you would, if you had all of the staff work about 2.4 hours of overtime every day, and I understand we probably wouldn't do that, but just to give you a frame of reference, uh, 2.4 hours every day, that <clears throat> would equal about 40 hours of work uh, per week, and the cost would be about the same as a full-time employee, uh, right around $100,000. So uh, with that, um, that's kind of my introduction to the topic, and then I'll let Jean uh, add some detail to that. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Uh, Mr. Ligurski, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, just a couple things, you know, kind of going down through this resolution and, and, and hitting the talking points that everybody had in there. I think Gary, Gary did a really good job of, you know, kind of giving the overall where we are, how much we cut, how much we've added um, as far as service areas. You know, the main thing for us that uh, drives us nuts about Sweetwater County is we're spread out everywhere. Um, the only county that has more road miles than us is Laramie County. Um, and they have about another 120 miles of road. And if you look at where their roads are, they're around Cheyenne, and then they're up in the south, the northeast corner of that. Um, it's farmland out there. They're every mile square. Um, so, you know, ours are spread out everywhere. The interesting thing about that is our gravel resources are spread everywhere. We have gravel resources in Rollins and then up on 372 along the river. So anytime we have to repair a road, we have to haul material. Um, just so you guys know, uh, 
mile long, 24 foot wide road, um, which is a typical county road. Six inches of road base is about 4,500 tons. One of our belly dumps can haul 22 tons. So it's a lot of trips. It's a lot of miles on the road. When you take one of the belly dumps down because we don't have a driver, um, you know, something happened and we're spread out. That's 20% of our production for the day. Uh, you know, we can make that up in overtime, but the problem is, is your main source of, of monetary money is in your blades and your rollers and your water trucks are out there waiting for material to get delivered. And that's where we run into this, where this crux, um, you know, we've shifted people around. We do a really good job. Um, when we're magging in the summertime, we have about a two month mag window, um, to put the chloride down on the road. You know, we really don't want to extend that in August too much because then you missed June and July. Um, we really like to get that done in, you know, about half of May all the way through about the middle of July. The main thing with magging is we have to get all the roads prepped. And then we also have to bring water to it. Cause if you don't mag and you don't have an adequate number of water, the mag chloride doesn't sit correctly in the road. And it's just a waste of time. We might as well not do it. Um, last year, you know, we postponed a lot of stuff because we were just super busy. Um, the Minis Gap Road, Browns Park Road kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then what we finally did is once all the contractors shut down for the year, um, we rented 17 trucks plus R6 to get everything done in four days. We can do that. The hard part about it is with the highway jobs and everything that's going on, you can't rent any trucks from um, about May through, you know, October 15th is you typically when they shut paving down. Um, and that's why we had to wait so long that goes to our level of service and what our constituents, you know, expect. You guys got a lot of phone calls on Minis Gap. I got a ton of phone calls on Minis Gap and that's not a very well used road, you know, compared to our other ones. So, you know, I guess my main thing is hauling material is the most important thing. You know, um, Gary mentioned the blades <laughs> and the, the everything that doesn't include the other 12 pieces of equipment that our rollers, loaders, stuff like that, that we have sitting that we have to put in when we're loading our own stockpile. Um, that we're, you know, rolling the material in that we need people for that we have to take out of a piece of equipment. Um, the other thing that you guys know, we just signed it. We signed an MRU or you guys signed an MOU uh, with the state over the next couple of years, we're going to get about 400,000 tons of material um, from the state. It's free material. They're going to kind of distribute it out for us along the interstate, which is great. We still need to haul it to the jobs. Um, it'll save on our cycle times. But when you typically look at a cycle time, if we have to haul from Patrick Draw. Rollins to Patrick draw, or we have to haul from Green River to Patrick draw. We can only get three truckloads a day per truck. That's only 18 trucks. So it really hampers what we can do. And, and as far as the level of service that I, I think the community deserves. So that's all I had to say. Um, well, I guess one other thing it says on here, what other um, technological advancements have you guys done? You know, you guys allowed us to buy two bigger blades. That's helped out immensely. Um, we've started using geotextile fabrics on our soft spots. So let's cut down on um, the road base that we have to haul. You know, instead of hauling a foot out there, we've been able to, to slim up the section and still get the same structural coefficients. Um, you know, last two years ago on Yellowstone, we used cement treated base um, to get some more longevity and, and stuff like that. All of those are tools in our tool belt that we can use, but you still need to get material out to the project. So, um, you know, the only other thing on here is... Um, delaying work or having me run a blade. I can't drive a truck. I don't have a CDL. Um, I don't know if I can even run one of the new blades, but with the training that they went through, I'm sure I can get in one, but that takes me out of doing um, what you guys have me do. And that's, and that's managing and making sure everything runs smooth. So um, as far as work, as, as I go, I'm the only one that can do that. Everybody else is out working. So hopefully that answers the questions on your guys' resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. Commissioners, any questions? Mr. Shanefield. Thank you. Um, this is for for both Gene and Gary. Um, have you guys looked into options of having this be a part-time position, a temporary position, and as needed, like when you have these projects and you need drivers, um, planning that ahead and bringing people in specifically for the projects, um, or potentially doing it as a temporary position through the summer to get everything done um, that you've got going on? We have, my main concern is knowing um, what YDOT has along the interstate. You know, they have about $50 million worth of work along the interstate between Rollins and Green River this year. Where do we find those people? You know, I know a lot of, ton of people have been 
um, laid off um, from other things, but it seems like they just get, you know, put back up. And all the years that I work construction, you know, most of those guys work nine months. Um, they aren't looking for a two or a three month job. They're working for a nine month job and then they get laid off and they get rehired, you know, typically this time of the year. Um, so we have looked at that. My main thing is I don't know if we can find them. Commissioner Shankfield, I'd also add to that, we've historically um, budgeted um, a little bit of money uh, for part-time and certainly, you know, that we could certainly try that as, as I think Gene alluded to. If we're going to do it, this is probably as favorable. Um, a lot of times as projects start, as you know, um, oil and gas activity or other things start, you lose um, that level of, of availability of people for either higher paying or more full-time jobs. Um, and, um, but we do have some folks that we've interviewed, some past em uh, employees that either took their early retirement or um, other folks that have some training that would be willing to do some work uh, for us. So we've talked to them um, and, and that would be a question of whether, how much we, we budgeted for those um, uh, part-time salaries. Um, I think those make a lot of sense in areas like where last winter we had some real bad snows and uh, Wamsutter and those places and just wore people out, uh, sending them out 12, <clears throat> 13 hours a day plowing snow. I think we can certainly fill in some of those areas or um, maybe uh, driving a, a truck. I think it's more difficult in, in areas with part-time employees where you have more skilled uh, work, and especially in building, constructing, or maintaining roads um, in a particular way. So I think there's a place for that for sure. And, and we, you know, trying to decide how big that needs to be is somewhat of a challenge because it changes from, from year to year based on weather and the availability of funds and projects like the YDOT money. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Shainfield. Thank you. And then the, I guess the other question I have is in the past, we partnered with the events complex. Are there any other entities that we can partner with at this point in time that, you know, I think those are rocks that we need to turn over as well before we move forward with the hiring. Um, we have, you know, one of the things that we've talked about with fires, getting some of their guys CDL qualified. Um, you know, the, the problem is that they have to have CDL air brake um, licenses, or they have to be able to run a piece of equipment. And, uh, Everybody thinks they can run equipment. Um, they can't. I'll just be honest with you. I can I can run just about any piece of equipment. I can't operate it. You don't want to see me operate a piece of equipment. There's a difference. Um, so we have reached out to them. Most people don't have CDL people just sitting there waiting, not busy. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Shanefield. Other questions, Commissioners? Yeah, I have a question. Commissioner Mr. Lloyd? Um, this question is for Gene. If I'm not mistaken, um, you had two, just to clarify, you had two take early retirement and we're about to lose a total of two more in the next short period of time. So that'd be a total of four loss, correct, Gene? No, it's only three. We, we lost two to early retirement and then we lost this other one last week. Okay. That's correct. Uh, yeah, but it's been a total of uh, 12 over the last 10 years that we've lost early retirement or that we haven't backfield. Thank you, Gene. Other questions? Mr. Tolman? I'd be ready to make a motion. Well, I got one question first. Please hold on that motion. Uh, Gene, as, as I've been listening, this equipment operator uh, would also work in the winter snow plowing? Yeah, you know, it's um, our end dumps. Uh, the end dumps we have are, are, we convert them to from water trucks and dumps to plow trucks in the wintertime. Okay. And then we still use our blades. So even if you look at that, we have 18 people that can operate that. We have 20 pieces of equipment in the winter that uh, can be plowing roads. So we have two that are just sitting there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Doc's looking for a side hustle. Huh? You're looking for a side hustle, aren't you? Maybe. Maybe. Elections yeah. coming up. Doc, going back, <laughs> well, uh, Chairman Wendland, going back to your last comment, you know, the, the thing that um, Utah uses a lot is uh, teachers for the summer. They love working a 410 schedule. I can't grab any teachers that want to drive truck or uh, load trucks for me. Uh, in Sweetwater anyway. But uh, yeah, I know uh, Utah uses that a lot. Matter of fact, half their workforce comes from teachers wanting to work a 410 schedule. You know what the moral behind the story is there, don't you, Gene? Wyoming pays its educators better than Utah. It, do it does. But um, in talking to some of the guys that you can appreciate a long time ago, they used to run concrete trucks for uh, the Laos brothers a lot too. So back in the 70s, oh. they, they just liked working, so. 
Yeah, I, I did that. Yes, I, there, yeah, I can even remember going back in those days and spent my summer doing construction work and loved every bit of it. So, you know, things have changed, though. We're moving forward. And as Commissioner Tolman has said, we're visionary. We're working outside the box. So we'll continue to do so. Okay, any other questions, commissioners? Commissioner Tolman, you said you're ready to make a motion. Well, I would move to approve uh, approve the position. Okay. I know I know we're in budget crunch and everything, but I, I really honestly believe our road and bridge is one of the leanest, meanest in the state, and we need to take care of our county, and it's huge. Okay. We have a motion to approve to restaff the equipment operator and road and bridge. Is there a second? I'll second just for the sake Seconded of Seconded by Commissioner Smith. Any further discussion? Yes. Go ahead, Commissioner Smith. I'd like to ask uh, the feelings of Commissioner Lloyd on this when we look at uh, the, our, our clerk of courts and, and not filling that position recently. So I know that you have some thoughts, Roy. What, what are you thinking down there? What would make you think I would have thoughts on something like that? Because you're the best <laughs> marinated or I know. <laughs> You know, I actually talked to Gene about this a little bit yesterday, and I struggle with this because um, we've told multiple departments we would make decisions regarding these positions when we got into budget. Um, I do concern a little bit about some of the health and safety that could be involved if we're not maintaining all the roads and some of the other issues that were there. But for me, I was going to make a comment before um, Jeff invited me to was that I may, um, which so what great marinating on Jeff's part, but they, um, um, that I, I may vote no, and if so, I do think the position is needed, but I think we should hold on some of these positions until we are in the budget discussion. I still think we should not have moved forward on the fire department positions and stayed consistent. So if I vote no, it will be because of consistency. Thank you. Any other discussion, commissioners? With that, I sense a roll call vote to approve restaffing. Commissioner Tolman. Yes. Commissioner Smith. No. Commissioner Lloyd. No. Commissioner Shanefield. No. Commissioner Wendling. Yes. Motion fails. So it's either on hold or wherever it lands. Very good. Good job, commissioners. Good discussion. Moving forward with our next agenda item, TAM, tab M, which is the uh, seasonal positions in parks and rec department. And again, to present those, I believe, is Mr. McLean and Mr. Ligurski. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Mr. McLean first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you know, um, each year uh, coming into the summer season, uh, we bring on folks to help take care of um, the 13 or so parks um, spread out throughout the county. Um, we typically uh, hire uh, a number of summer people similar to the fire department for various periods of time, um, obviously to help us get started in the spring and then through the busy months of uh, softball tournaments, events, and other things, and then uh, keep a few on um, in the late <clears throat> fall uh, <clears throat> until the parks are essentially <clears throat> closed or, or not used. Um, the request that's in front of you um, is um, a reduction from last year. Um, last year, there were eight six-month positions requested at a cost of approximately 128,000. Um, what's in front of you, and we'll run through that quickly, are a mix of six month and three month at uh, an approximate cost of 97,000. And um, just quickly, we have uh, in this request, and I hope it's okay that I you know, lumped them together be, um, as opposed to a number of individual requests, but um, we have a six month uh, seasonal shooting sport attendant six month seasonal crew leader. Um, this is a uh, six month seasonal uh, crew leader. Two, there's two of those. Um, and a six month seasonal labor, another six month seasonal labor, three month seasonal labor, three month seasonal labor uh, for the costs that are indicated uh, on that worksheet. Okay. Gene, anything to add? Yeah, as you can see, it's a 30% reduction from last year. Um, Chris and I really sat down and, and went through all the parks, what needed to be done. You guys allowed us to buy some new equipment last year that is greatly going to increase our production, especially in the mowing of the parks and taking care of the parks that way. 
um, you, you know, everybody, it's, it, it's interesting when they use the parks, um, they're all over the place. They're scattered just like our roads are. Um, and one thing that we have to do June, July, and August is we actually split our crew in, in, in not quite half, um, but they work uh, seven days a week. You know, when we have reservations and stuff like that, we have to make sure that the park's clean. We have to make sure all the trash is taken out, have to make sure that everything gets washed down the morning before, um, you know, from whatever was in there the, the night before um, to make sure that the park's safe. Um, you know, we take care of um, the making sure the porta potties are up and running, making sure that so they have an enjoyable experience um, when they do that. Um, you know, as you can see last year, um, the parks were used a ton. Um, just like all the outdoors uh, were for, um, you know, basically Wyoming, everybody was trying to escape. So what we're trying to do with this is, is to get it as small as possible, but still uh, service everybody, still maintain the grass at appropriate height. Um, I've talked to Mike Bernazin with the fire. He's willing to help us out when they're not busy, um, do some of the trail modifications, um, some of the trash pickup, um, some of that when they're out and about. Um, and that allowed us to be able to, um, you know, really get rid of some people, but you know, it starts um, with the sprinkler systems and just like you do in your house, you know, they start in April and May and we roll through October, um, you know, cutting grass and doing everything that everybody has to do in, in a 13 park scattered all over everywhere. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Ligurski. Uh, <clears throat> commissioners, any questions for Mr. Ligurski or Mr. McLean? Commissioner Shanefield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have the same similar questions as I did with the last position. Have you looked at partnering with these other entities? Um, I'm sure that the cities, I think this is something we could partner with some of them um, to reduce workforce across the board. And they're in the same budget process that we are. Um, and so I just would love to, to, to see if we can partner with some others. I, I have not, uh, Commissioner Shanefeld reached out to the city because they're kind of in the same way. They, they need to hire people to take care of their parks. So why would they send them out to our parks? Um, especially, you know, when they're 45 miles north of, of Rock Springs and 40 miles north of Green River and, you know, 20 miles uh, or 15 miles south of Rock Springs. Um, they like keeping theirs in because it's, it's their travel time. Um, like I said, I have reached out to um, the fire department, our fire department, uh, Bernaysian and he, they're willing to help out, um, you know, but if their fire season picks up, we lose that. Um, the other thing is last year we did use the events complex. Um, we paid for those people. We kept those on, we paid full time for those people. Um, so they, the events complex could keep them on until we laid them off or they laid them off, at, you know, whenever they did. So we actually paid the, we reimbursed the events complex for their people. Thank you, Gene. Other questions, commissioners? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Gene. Mr. Lloyd. Yeah, Gene, um, if we were to have to hold on this until for a month or two, how would that affect being able to make sure we had the right people to cover these positions throughout the summer or the, the, the three to six month periods? Uh, the three month doesn't bother me, um, except for your, your oh. summer hires because their college kids goes down and down because, you know, by the time they get done with school, they want to have a summer job already lined up. Um, you know, we ran into that the first year I took this over. We waited a little bit until April, May, and it, we struggled getting getting enough applicants. Um, you know, we were basically hiring people that came in the door. Um, with the six-month uh, seasonal employees, we stagger those so that we can get the parks up and running, um, you know, get the lawns prepped, fertilized, weeds picked up, branches, do all of that stuff and, and ready for that. So that's how, we, how can we have those, um, you know, and run those through. So we need to get those going because <clears> – <throat> When the sprinkler water turns on, we need to get it on the grass, you know, especially for our parks that have um, soccer fields, stuff like that in them where they have a heavy use. Because if you don't get the water on them, they don't use them in time. It ruins the crown, the crown of the grass. And then you're in a reseeding, um, an overlay, something like that um, with the grass. So we need to get those up and running. You know, right now, Chris is the only one uh, there. Um, and he helps us out in maintenance as much as he can. And then he also plows parking lots and does everything like that for, um, you know, the maintenance, building maintenance and stuff like that. So we've been able to utilize him back and forth, but it's in another month, it's time for him to start concentrating on the parks. Thank you. Questions, commissioners? Uh, 
Gene, you commented that you've reduced this by a third. So is this money uh, for these positions in your budget? Uh, we, we overlap budget years. Yeah, so we, we do have it in May and June in this budget. But then in the next budget, we would have to, you know, rebudget this this amount uh, for next year. We have it. We actually, because we asked for more money, we have plenty for this year. But, you know, the budget session is starts in over in July. So this is a carryover just like uh, Mike's was where we straddle two budget years with our seasonal employees. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, commissioners? Pleasure. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Lloyd. I'd make a motion to staff the seven seasonal positions um, as requested by Mr. Ligurski for, um, for uh, uh, the parks. We have a motion to approve uh, staffing the positions and authorize chairman to sign. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Any further discussion, commissioners? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I've tried to remain consistent in these approvals, and I think I've done a really good job in doing so. My concern in not approving this one would be we'd have no employees to take care of parks. Um, in the other departments, we've um, not been able that we've uh, not we've said we'd hold off on. They would have they've had the ability to continue to maintain and meet those responsibilities. Um, I don't think one person uh, can cover all of the parks. Um, especially as spread out as they are, nor do I think we could we should expect anyone else in any of other genes departments with us holding on positions to be able to cover that duty. So um, I also appreciate the fact that Mr. Ligurski had cut 33% from $33,000 approximately from this budget. Um, and I also have faith that Mr. Ligurski, if some of these can end sooner or later or whatever, I, I have faith that he would do that. So I would actually lean toward this because I, I, I don't think we could wait and not have our parks be ready for the season. And I'd hate to have Jim Zimmerman give us a nuisance um, complaint on our own properties. Well, since you won't be able to drive on the county roads, you can always sit in the park. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? With that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Wait for it, wait for it. Motion carries. Gene, you got your seasonals. Thank you. Thank you. All right, as we move forward, next up will be the uh, request to approval of the UMR financial renewal and terms agreement or amendment agreement. And to present that to us is Mr. McLean. Gary? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners. Um, you know, after uh, open enrollment and, and renewal, uh, we get a trickle of the contract agreements come in that help us or allow us to administrate our health insurance program. This uh, particular agreement is with UMR for their uh, TPA services, um, which is a third party administrator, as you know, UMR. Uh, uh, we're a self-funded plan. We contract with them to review those claims and pay the bills um, in accordance with the terms of our plan agreement. And, um, and um, this year we have uh, you know, some slight changes to the agreement in that um, we've, uh, we have the Teladoc services um, that, that will be available and we're also taking some of the large claim uh, management away from uh, UMR and moving it to um, the third party, um, which will actually begin the uh, first of uh, March. We've been busy uh, bringing those services online because we, <clears throat> as we discussed during open enrollment, we expect uh, a 3% or greater savings um, in reducing large claims and especially large pharmaceutical claims and, um, and so uh, I'm requesting that the board uh, approve and authorize the, the TPA agreement that's been provided um, and authorize the chairman to sign. Okay, commissioners, questions for Mr. McLean? 
I look down the table, I see no questions. So, Commissioner, is your pleasure regarding the a, uh, UMR financial renewal in terms of, of amendment agreement and authorizing the chair to sign? So moved. So moved by Commissioner Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Gary. Let's move on to the stop loss contract with HCC Life Insurance Company. Mr. McLean, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, County Commissioners. As with the last uh, agreement, this is actually the agreement um, for stop loss insurance, uh, an important and integral part of our health insurance delivery uh, method. Stop loss insurance means that <clears throat> our plan pays dollar for dollar claim costs if you go into the hospital or have surgery up to a certain amount. Above that amount, the stop loss insurance company uh, pays for um, the rest of that bill. As we discussed during open enrollment this year in particular, largely because of um, high dollar pharmacies, we had um, a number, a large number of very large claims in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, which has put a lot of pressure on stop loss bidding. Um, we get prices every year for stop loss uh, insurance. Because of the large number of those really high dollar claims, some to a million or more dollars, um, we looked at some other options um, <clears throat> to um, keep those costs lower this year um, and in future years. And one of those uh, options is using a risk management pool for similar type companies. Um, and that's what we did here. Part of the reason we did that is because of the six plus large claims that we had, the stop loss providers were requesting lasers on those. And lasers mean that um, the plan will be responsible rather um, for those specific claims because they know um, that those claims are going to occur. There's no risk with them, they're already in process um, and they know they're gonna be high. So they laser those at a certain amount. Um, so we'd have had six of those um, so our exposure, say to a million dollars, could have been 700,000, 800,000 or more. Um, very difficult to expose the plan to that risk. Um, so one of the options in working with Diversified that we came up with is this uh, Pareto Risk Management Pool. It's a pool that um, after we have one laser this year and then in future years, there will not be lasers and um, also puts limits on the amount that the stop loss um, rates can increase. And for the reasons I just mentioned, uh, that seems to be a good fit for us. And we increased the stop loss uh, threshold from 175 to 200,000. Um, so those are the highlights of this. Um, the agreement that I provided to you um, is redacted. I have the original the board decides to sign that, I'll bring that up. The reason um, that it's redacted, there are specific individuals whose claims are lasered, uh, which I did not feel was relevant or important to put in the board packets. Um, and so your copy is redacted on line E. Um, and so with that, I would uh, be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Commissioners, questions for Mr. McLean? I don't see any at the moment. So with there be no questions, commissioners, what's your pleasure regarding the approval of a stop, stop loss contract with HCC and authorizing the chairman to sign? So moved. Have a motion by Commissioner Shanefield to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Okay, next up on our agenda is tab O, request approval of contract with State of Wyoming Military Department concerning VSO outreach services. Presenting that to us, Mr. McLean. Gary, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've had a little smorgasbord of everything today, so I thought I'd throw in some VSO <laughs> stuff for, uh, for interest at least. Um, this is kind of an exciting, uh, I think, uh, agreement um, just to provide 
everybody because I know we have some new commissioners. In 2007, I broached the topic with the Lincoln Sublet and Sweetwater County Commissioners of creating a Tri-County Veteran Services Program um, to deliver veteran services at a time when the state did not have a program. Um, as you will recall, uh, former Commissioner Don Van Meter was the first director of that program and did an immense amount to get that program established and the relationships built. And um, Currently, we provide veteran services from, the, uh, from uh, literally just outside of Jackson to Evanston to Wamsutter, I mean, almost a third of, of the, uh, the state. And um, it's tremendously successful. Um, I'll, I have a presentation that I'll make before the board uh, in the upcoming weeks showing you how much money this program has brought back to the respective communities. Um, last year, I was approached by um, Tim Shepard, the director of uh, veteran services for the state of Wyoming. Um, they had placed a veteran services officer in Evanston. Um, that individual lasted a few months um, and left um, a lot of chaos in the wake and a lot of difficulty. He asked if Nancy Stafford, who's our veteran service officer in Lincoln County, would be able to travel to Evanston to cover uh, that need. <clears throat> um, she had indicated, especially with some of the uh, uh, changes that have occurred in Lincoln County, that she would be able to do that. And last year, uh, the board signed an agreement um, that, that per permitted her to go over there uh, once a week, which she currently does uh, on Wednesdays. Since doing that, um, the problems experienced in Uinta County have gone away. I had a recent phone call with Mr. Shepard. Um, he was very pleased with, with the progress and virtually the complaints and concerns have been expressed ha have, have drastically gone down and, and folks are very, very happy there. The state currently reimburses dollar for dollar for the expenses for Ms. Stafford to go to Evanston on Wednesdays. That's mileage plus, um, plus her time. And this agreement extends that uh, through March of 2022. Um, I think it's a great program. Um, one of the problems that the state ran into, which of course we learned the hard way, is that these are positions you can't just put people in. It takes several years, I would say three years for people to be really skilled at interfacing with uh, the, uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs and processing claims. And um, by putting an experienced person in there, um, uh, it's been much more successful. To remind everyone, Nancy is certified with the Disabled American Veterans, the VFW, the American Legion and the National Association a county service officers. And so um, all three of the VSOs that currently work for us are very ex uh, experienced and well-trained and work closely with one another to, to process uh, claims. So this is just, uh, this agreement particularly um, is a win-win. It gives the state good services in Evanston. It also reduces the program costs. And for that reason, uh, I heartily endorse it. I haven't mean, taken any questions. If, Thank questions. you, Mr. McLean. Questions, commissioners? Just a comment for the commissioners as well as Mr. McLean is uh, this um, model that is presently being used is uh, probably, if not the, the best, it is, there's no better in the state of Wyoming than it has been commented on in several WCCA meetings and presentations. Uh, and uh, it's uh, served veterans very, very well and probably better than uh, most programs. Also, if the commissioners would remember, it wasn't just too long ago where WCCA went into a uh, change in their, in their uh, ch um, charter. And basically they voted to bring VSO in under the WCCA as one of our committees yeah. so that the WCCA from this point forward now will be a lobbying effort for VSO. Up until this time, our veterans had very little, but now they've got the entire WCCA behind them throughout the state of uh, Wyoming. And uh, from my standpoint, I would like to welcome VSO in under the uh, charter for the uh, WCCA. So with that, uh, any other comments, commissioners? What's your pleasure regarding this request and authorizing the chairman to sign. 
Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shainfield. I make a motion to approve the contract um, as presented and authorize the chairman to sign. We have a motion to approve and authorize the chairman to sign. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Gary. Well done. Thank you, um, with that, commissioners, I know we have a couple agenda items up with uh, our uh, esteemed uh, treasurer. I would like to take a 10 minute break, please. All right, so we'll take a 10 minute break. We'll be back here at quarter 212, 1145.
this meeting back to order and resume with our business items. Up next is under tab P, which is approval of public depositories. And uh, with us today is Mr. Slaughter, our esteemed treasurer. Good morning, Rob, again. Hey, Rob, I'm surprised you have connection wherever you're at. It looks awful good there. You know, it's, it's amazing the Wi-Fi that they have here in Bali. <laughs> good infrastructure, I'm sure. Excellent, excellent Wi-Fi here. Uh, losing, losing that tie out there at the beach, will you, Rob? <laughs> what I can well, figure out is how do you get the background picture to wave the branches? Well, I, I just have a fan that, that's moving it for me constantly. So. All righty. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, commissioners. Okay, Rob, you're up for the next agenda item. You or bet. Two. Commissioners, good morning again. Um, the, the first item that I have for you is our annual approval of the public depositories. So I, I've included in your packet a copy of an application for deposit of public funds, which each of you will sign, uh, hopefully, at, at, if you approve this. Um, under Wyoming Statute 94818, we are required to approve all of the public depositories. So for this year, we've received ap applications from the same entities that we had last year, Rocky Mountain Bank, Uinta Bank, First Bank Northside, Wells Fargo Bank, State Bank of Green River, RSNB, Commerce Bank, and U.S. Bank. So as I stated, this is something that we do annually. It's, it's only required that we have these, these public depositories approved. It's not necessary that we do it annually. We have always made it a, a practice of doing it annually. So we do it usually the, the first meeting of March every year. So that's what we're doing here today. If, if we could, I would like to have a motion for you to approve these depositories. If you have any questions, I would be glad to answer them first. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slaughter. Commissioners, questions? Commissioner Toman. Uh, yes, I have a question. Is, uh, are the, uh, like Toronto Valley, are they included in these banks or is that considered separately or do we not engage with them? They are not. Excuse me, Commissioner Tolman and, and Chairman, um, they have not made application in the past to be a public depository for us. So these are the entities that we have that have made that application. Um, the, the credit unions typically in the past have never made application of deposit for, to be depositories for the county. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Slaughter. Other questions, Commissioner? Your pleasure. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shainfield. Make a motion to um, approve the depositories as presented. We have a motion by Commissioner Shainfield to approve the depositories as presented. Is there a second? Commissioner Tolman seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Rob. You bet. Moving on. Tab Q, which is county, D, county reserve discussion. Okay, once again, Mr. Chairman, um, as, as part of the strategic planning process that the commission has undertaken, one of the first priorities that the commission had come up with was basically trying to come up with what we perceive as being the correct amount for our county reserves to be maintained. Um, as part of that, the chairman had asked me to give some recommendation and have some discussion at this meeting on what my belief is as to what that level should be to talk with our, our accounting manager, Bonnie Berry, get some input from her, and then to try and arrive at some method of how we, how we get to that point in time. So what I've put together, I, hopeful, I, I hope will help you um, with respect to making that decision. Uh, I, I've condensed a lot of information into just a few slides here to do this. I, I sent it out to you on Friday. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at it. I think it will flow fairly well, but if you have any questions, stop me at any time. Um, but basically it's, it's just going to be a discussion of where we think that the, those reserves should be and how we would get there. So I'm going to try and share my screen at this point in time and hope that technology works. It's worked in the past when I've done this, so.
Okay, do we see the, my screen? Yes. Yep, you're good. Okay, so, so commissioners, basically, if we're going to talk about what we believe the reserve should be, I would believe that the first thing that we should do is look at what our reserves have previously been. So the, the first thing that we wanna look at is what our reserves have been in the past. So if you, if you look at this sheet, it will show that our reserves beginning in 1997 started with slightly under $2 million and peaked at a point of over $50 million in 2016. So our, our reserve that we projected for 2021 and what we need to take into account with respect to these balances is this is what we would anticipate the reserve balance to be if we collected all of the taxes that we had assessed, we, we got all of the revenue that we had planned on and all of our expenditures are what they are. So this, this would be our projected balance at fiscal, uh, at the end of the fiscal year or June 30th of 2022, or excuse me, 2021. This sheet actually shows the income that we've derived from those reserves over time. And you can see since 2007, on just the general fund, we've, we've actually made almost $9 million in investment income. So that's been a big part of the revenue that we've generated at Sweetwater County over that period of time. This sheet, I, was, I see that Bonnie is out there. I was kind of hoping she wouldn't be so I could talk badly about her and she wouldn't know about it. But <laughs> I, I've emphasized my suggestion here and I've de-emphasized her suggestion because her, hers isn't nearly as important, I don't think, as mine is. <laughs> Actually, this, this is, once again, as I say, just kind of a suggestion of what I see that we could set aside as reserves and something that I would kind of suggest as, as to how we would do it. So in looking at how we would set up reserves moving forward, we've, we've always believed that we needed five to six months of operating to, to get through from the start of the fiscal year until we receive that first big tax payment on November 10th. Um, because our, our budget is as limited as what it is and our revenue picture is as bleak as what it is over the next couple of years, I've included something that I think would be appropriate, uh, a capital reserve. Um, and and thinking, the thinking being there that we have a lot of buildings, we have things of that nature that we are not going to appropriate funds for in our budget, that there could potentially be emergencies if we had a roof fail or something of that nature, we would need to have some capital in place to do that. So I would think it would be appropriate to set aside some reserves for that. I arbitrarily chose $5 million for this number. I think that's a good starting place. Um, health insurance, you know, we, we have the health insurance fund and currently we've got a little over $2 million in that fund. But if you look back just, just two years ago, we had five and a half million dollars in that health insurance fund. And the, the premiums which we paid last year depleted that fund pretty dramatically. And so I think that it could be appropriate if you chose to, to fund something of that nature as a health insurance reserve to do so. Um, then something that I have, I've really pushed over the last several years, I've been very ineffective apparently, apparently at doing it, but I think that it would be appropriate as we're restructuring now to set up an employee benefit reserve. Um, Obviously, the, the reason for that being because of the, the huge fluctuations that we have in revenue and our valuations, a lot of times the employees' needs have not been met, in my opinion. And, and what I've seen through 30 years of, of bu the budget process is the employee cost of living increases and bonuses typically are the last thing that are added into the budget. Um, because of that, I think it's important in a declining revenue environment that we have money available. So it gives the commission the ability and some flexibility if you chose in the future to give a, a, a bonus or something of that nature to the employees, you would have money set aside to do that. You wouldn't have to. And, and I, I, I see Bonnie's point with respect to this very well in speaking with her. Her belief is that those funds should be budgeted each, each year at the start of the budget. 
Um, I just have not seen that take place. And that's the reason I believe it would be a, a reason to have that type of reserve. And then the last thing that I've shown here is a budget shortfall reserve. You'll notice I, I have it listed as 15% on a $1.1 billion valuation. What this is, is with the passage of Senate File 60, which has now been signed into law as House Enrolled Act Number 9, um, just this legislative session, we are going to have a dramatic change in how we collect mineral taxes and how we budget for those mineral taxes. And so in the past, where we have had the State Board of Equalization certify a value to us, we have then certified levies and we have collected the taxes on those levies and collected 99% of that tax over time and, and known what we were going to receive. In the future, what's going to happen is the, the State Board of Equalization is going to certify those values again, but they're going to certify the prior year. We are going to do our best estimate at what the production and pricing of minerals in Sweetwater County are going to be for the next 12 month period and use those numbers for our budgeting purposes. So I believe, and, and it's kind of the, the belief of everyone who I've talked to with respect to this, that you know, there's a high likelihood at some point in the future, we are going to do the best job that we can in projecting that budget and the price of the product of, of our commodities or production levels are going to go down and we will under collect what we had anticipated for that year. If we do that, we will have budget deficits and it would be imperative that we have a reserve to cover those so that those entities who had levies in place are, are made whole. So that's kind of what I, I threw out. That, that would leave us with a $22 million cash reserve that I think kind of what, what we would need. In talking with Bonnie, you know, and, and I don't, I, I, I like to tease her just a little bit. Um, I, I don't want to minimize her suggestions. Her belief is that currently we could look at a five to six month operational income and then just lump everything basically together into $5 million for emergencies. And if we were to do that, we, we could get by with $15 million. Now that's, that's all going to be subject to change. And we'll talk about that just a little bit more in a moment. But that's, that's kind of where we are and, and just where we want to start with our discussion. So any questions up to this point in time? Commissioners, any questions? Or Bonnie, I see Bonnie's with us. Thank you, Bonnie. Or either Rob or Bonnie. Okay, move on. Okay, we'll, we will move on. So this will give you an indication of what we would want, the reasons we would want to maintain higher reserves. You know, obviously we've shown the interest income that, that has been generated over time. It's been a, a, a very good interest, or interest generator for us. The second item that I've listed here is unfunded state mandates. Um, you know, this, we have seen many of those over time. The, the district court improvements that we've had to do in the past, along with there was speculation that we were going to see the state pass legislation, that we were going to have a new district court judge in Sweetwater County. That has kind of gone by the wayside now. It looks like that may go to, to Uinta County, but certainly we will see those types of things in the future. So that would be a reason we would want to look at higher reserves. The, the declining state funding that we are seeing um, as we speak, the state is looking at decreasing our direct distribution. So, you know, there the, the state is looking at minimizing the funding that they can do for local governments. It's going to be more imperative that we have funds in place to take care of our needs. The uncertainty of federal funding, you know, PILT has been something that's been up in the air for us for many years. Um, for, for, for about 20 years, PILT was funded as a long-term um, funding source for local governments. And when, when that legislation sunsetted each year annually since, it has been a part of the appropriation for the Department of Interior and there have been times it's been, there's been a lot of speculation as to whether we would actually receive the full amount of PILT funding or not. In fact, there have been years that we received 85% and then we received another payment of 15%. But typically we receive that, but it's something that certainly provides some uncertainty. And it's about three, it's over $3 million a year that we receive in revenue. So it's certainly something that we need to be aware of. 
The potential budget shortfalls that we talked about with the implementation of Senate File 60, um, that's, that's going to be something that we're really going to have to watch as we move forward. And we'll, we'll do better, a better job with that as we get more aware of, of how the implications of that are going to take place. Um, you know, as I said, future capital needs for county infrastructure, emergencies, things of that nature, operation and maintenance of the county buildings that we've got. Hopefully, we are going to get rid of some of the county buildings, which, which we've had uh, in the past, and, and we will be able to sell them. It's, it's not a great time to do that right now, but, um, you know, hopefully we will get rid of some of those and get rid of some of those costs, but we will have those. Healthcare, as we talked, is a, is a huge thing. Once again, for me, I think it's important that we stabilize the future of our employee benefits. And then the last one is really kind of the elephant in the room, and that's, that's the potential for uncollected taxes and bankruptcy. And, and we've seen really the dramatic impact of that with Southland royalties. Um, I just got an email yesterday again on Vanguard, so we're still working with that. And so, you know, those are things that, that would indicate that we may need additional revenue to fund things which we would not expect in future years budgets. Reasons to minimize the reserves. And, and this Treasure is something- Slaughter, we, Yes. Got a question from a commissioner. commissioner okay, Schoen. go right ahead. I was gonna say, um, you made excellent point for five slides of why to increase. Uh, I was wondering what Bonnie has a rebuttal on any of that for her for uh, lower estimates. <laughs> Ms. Berry, did you I think question? Rob's going to get into that with this next slide. These are your reasons? Okay. <laughs> well, they're not necessarily my reasons. I'll, I'll tell you, well, number four on this next slide is my reason. Um, just the way government accounting is supposed to work, well, government funding, government spending, uh, we're not supposed to carry a lot of reserves. Uh, the, the taxpayer dollars that the taxpayers are currently paying are supposed to benefit those taxpayers. So they're not meant to be held on to and saved for a future project or future taxpayers. They're meant to benefit the taxpayer who is paying those taxes. So, so um, it, it comes down to how government is supposed to function. That's why I believe a smaller reserve amount uh, it is is fine. And that's what we should have. I'm, I'm grateful we have the excess reserves right now um, because it, it allows us to be able to um, reduce government very slowly and less painfully. Um, but we, we really don't need as much in reserves as we currently have. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, Rob, carry on. Next slide. Okay. On, on to that, and, and that goes back to point number one also. You know, there have been several discussions with commissions in the past, and, and certainly my, my position has always been that the money is typically better served in the taxpayer's hands rather than in government's hands. Certainly, we need reserves for certain purposes. And, and as Bonnie just stated, you know, fortunately, at this point in time with what we're seeing, it's important that we have the reserves in place that we have. Otherwise, we would be in a real big problem. And, and that's, that's the reason that I see things just a little bit differently than she does. I understand totally what she's stating with respect to item number four here, the governmental accounting standards. You know, typically, it's not something where you would hold reserves for gov governmental entities. But I don't think most governmental entities experience the highs and lows of the valuation changes and revenue changes that we typically see in Sweetwater County. So things are a little bit different for us in a practical environment than what they are in that. Um, you know, the second reason that I've got shown here is interest rates currently are so low that we're earning very, very little on our investments. Um, and so if we can use that money, I, I think we're much better off to use as much of that as we can. Um, the third item, and this is something we kind of need to talk about, the changes in Senate File 60 or House Enrolled Act or Senate File, excuse me, Senate Enrolled Act number nine are going to even out our tax payments over time. So beginning in January of 2022, the mineral companies are going to start paying their taxes on a monthly basis to the Department of Revenue. They are going to be required to file their reports within 
uh, by the 25th day of the second month following their production. So for January of 2022, they will be filing those reports effective March 25th. The Department of Revenue then is going to receive those. They are going to take a month to evaluate, compile those, and then send them on to the counties. So we're anticipating our first payment will come from those distributions, those monthly distributions to, to us in May of 2022. So beginning with fiscal 23, we will have a more consistent monthly flow of income from those minerals, which are over half or, or roughly half of our valuation. So it will even out the needs that we've had in the past, theoretically, for those reserves that we've had to start out. So as we move into that structure, we probably won't need the reserves to be quite as high as what they've been in the past. So something that we certainly want to consider with respect to that. Okay. The next slide shows the fiscal 21 budget. So this is the budget that we are currently in. If you look, our estimated revenue for this budget was $45.9 million, which was made up of $17.5 million of miscellaneous revenue. So that would be our severance taxes, our sales taxes, our administrative fees, all of those things. And then the 12 mil levy, okay? And of the 12 mils, the commission in this year's budget chose to use 8.72 mils of the 12 mils that are allocated for government funds or $20.6 million. The other 3.2 mils was allocated and, and can, was actually $7.7 .7 million and was used to fund our component units. So once again, the total revenue that we had available for our budget was $45.9 million. The expenditures that we had for this year, the core county expenditures were $37.7 million. Grant projects, we had $3.4 million. This kind of gives Christina a little bit of heartache that I, that I bring this into this discussion because we also had grant revenues as part of our miscellaneous revenue. That was about $3.2 million, but it is part of our expenditures and we have to account for that. So that's the reason I've included it. The agencies that we funded, the human service agencies, we funded at $5.9 million. And then the component units were funded with that 3.27 mils of the 12 mil. And you can see the events complex received 2.5 million, the library 2.8 on down the line. So that left us with a budget deficit of $8.9 million. Last year, we had a carryover of $3,349,000. So to, to fund the budget for last year, we used $5.5 million of reserves. So that theoretically will leave our budget, our, our, our budgeted reserves at 630 of 2021 at $34,100,000. Moving forward, this is, this is where it becomes important and we see what's going on with this. You can see that in 2006, 77% of the revenue that we received for our budget came from minerals. As short a time period back as 2015, it was still almost 70%. And with what we're projecting for the values for this year, it's going to be just under 50% of the value is going to be made up of minerals. So, We've, we've been very fortunate in the past that Sweetwater County has had the minerals that we've had and we've received the tax revenue that we have. But you can see the impact of that. Four of the last six years, we've had dramatic decreases in valuation. And the impact of that from 2015 to, to 2021, we've actually seen a billion dollar decrease in value. So since 2015, that means we have 12 million less dollars available to fund the 12 mil levy versus what we had in the past. Now, when you combine that with the fact that sales tax revenues are down and things of that nature, our revenues have really, really decreased since 2015. And that's what's made it so imperative that we look at the budgets and, and are very conservative moving forward. So for fiscal 22, when we look at the numbers that the assessor's office is, is projecting, they're projecting a $4.9 million decrease in the revenue that we had. So what I've got on this sheet is the, the fiscal 22 budget that I would project 
based on the numbers the assessor's office has given us for the valuation, along with the, re the same revenue that we projected for 21 and the same expenditures that we projected for fiscal 21. So if, if we look at that, our projected revenue is going to be $40,987,000. Our projected expenses will be $54.8 million, which would leave us a deficit of $13.8 million. Now, this is something that's a little arbitrary at this point in time. I've spoken with Bonnie and our revenues have come in at a, a really slower rate this year than they have in the past. A big part of that is the fact that Southland has not paid their $9 million of taxes at this point in time. So when I talked with her a month or so ago, she was concerned that we had we could potentially even have a negative cash, uh, cash carryover. Um, we don't believe that that's going to be the case. I think that we'll see those revenues pick up in, in the rest of the balance of the year. And so arbitrarily, you know, I chose to use a million five hundred thousand dollars as our cash carryover, and I've carried that through on all of the slides that we'll talk about in the future. So once again, that's that's a best guess as to where I think we we may possibly be at this point in time. So with that, with the current reserve balance that we have projected for June thirtieth, if we were to do exactly what we did last year and fund all of the budgets at the same level with the projected revenue that we've got it would take us the $12,345,000. That would decrease our reserves to on 630 of 22 to $21.7 million. Okay. So we really wanna look at this for fiscal 22, but I wanted to project out what the impact of this would be if we went out to fiscal 23 and 24. So if you look, the next column that I have there, um, I, I use the same revenue bringing the, the value forward. But the assessor and I both believe from what we've seen with minerals um, over the last few months and what's going on, we're, we're probably going to see a slight increase. So we believe it's gonna be about a $100 million increase in value, which would translate to a $1.2 million increase in revenue. So I increased the revenues to that $42.1 million for fiscal 23. I once again left the expenditures the same as what we had for fiscal 21 and projected what we would have for a deficit. That would be $12.6 million. I believe as we continue into this budget cycle, our, our carryovers are going to decrease, but for our purposes here, if, if we were to once again have $1.5 million in carryover, it would be $11.1 million that it would take for us to fund the budget for fiscal 23. So in doing that, that would decrease our reserve balance at 630 of 2023 to $10,600,000. Okay. Projecting that into fiscal 24, okay? I don't have a crystal ball, Divas doesn't have a crystal ball. So we believe that we will be at the same level for 24 that we are at 23. That's what we've used or what I've used for this. So our revenue would still be the $42 million. Our expenses would be the same. Our deficit would remain at the $12.6 million with the same $1.5 million carryover, we would have the same reserve necessary for budget. And at that point in time, we would have totally exhausted our reserves. So the, the point of this is obviously we can't continue funding at the level we did last year and just use reserves to do this. So what can we do to, to offset that and, and get to a level of $15 million as Bonnie has suggested, or maybe a little more than that that I've suggested? So I put in a 10% a decrease for fiscal 22, okay? Using the same numbers, okay? All I've done is change the expenditures and decrease the total expenditures by 10% on this slide. If we do that, and once again, this is just simply a decrease for fiscal year 22, leaving fiscal 23 and 24 at those levels as we budget for those, those years. Our, our reserve balance at June 30th of 2022 would be $27.2 million. At June 30th of 2023, it would be $21.6 million. And at June 30th of 24, it would be $15.9 million. So gives you an indication what would happen if you just reduced spending by 10% from the fiscal 21 balance, okay? Moving on. I also did a comparison if we did a 15% decrease, once again, using the same numbers, only decreasing 
our expenditures by 15% to $46.6 million, leaving everything else constant. At the, at the balance 630 of 2022, we would have a little over $30 million. June 30th of 23, we'd have $27 million. And June 30th of 24, we would have $24 million. So once again, giving you an indication, if you just do this in 22, where we're at. Now, remember, if you do that, we still have a budget deficit at this point in time of $4,420,000 in fiscal 24. So it looks like our balance would be $24 million, but we would still anticipate at that point in time with no revenue change or with the expenditures maintaining where they are, that we would still have to fund that budget with $4.4 million of reserves. So this is not a perfect scenario and I probably should have done an analysis with a 20% decrease that would have probably balanced us at, at that point in time. Um, but once again, this is for illustrative purposes and to help you see that. So the next slide, I think, sum, summarizes this a little bit better and you can kind of see it a little bit more in one place. So for fiscal year 22, if we do nothing, these would be the anticipated balances that we would have in our cash reserves. If we do a 10% decrease in fiscal 22 and leave everything the same for 23 and 24, these would be the amounts that we would be looking at for our reserve balances. And if we were to do a 15% decrease in fiscal 22, leaving everything else remaining constant for 23 and 24, these would be our balances. Now, once again, as I stated at the end of the last slide, there was still a $4 million budget deficit in the projected 24 budget that we would have to account for. But that also gives you some flexibility. You know, As I said, there were no changes to the expenditures for fiscal 23 or 24. You'd be able to, to make some of those adjustments based on what you actually see take place in the fiscal 22 budget. So that leads to recommendations. Okay, so the actual recommendations, and mine are much more important once again than Bonnie's, remember that. <laughs> I think we should set a reserve target between 18 and $22 million. Okay, and, and I would structure it somewhat the same as what I had in that slide that we talked about earlier. We definitely need to monitor the effects of Senate File 60 so that we can adjust our cash flows and set the future reserves, because I do believe we're going to see uh, less need for res reserves as we get into fiscal 23 and we start receiving those mineral payments on, on that monthly schedule. But we're going to have to evaluate that. We're going to have to have real-time data before I think we can de decrease the reserves and do that. I, I believe that we should budget the reserves for capital expenses and, and employee concerns. And I think at that point in time, we consider future cuts and expenditures um, to, to attain the balance that we want. Bonnie, on the other hand, and, and once again, you know, not to discount it, because under governmental accounting principles, you know, her, her theory is sound. You know, she would set a target of $15 million. She, she would agree we'd want to monitor the effects of Senate File 60. At that point in time, we may even be able to decrease from the $15 million. Um, we would anticipate that, but we need to have the data before we can do that. She believes that we should budget for the capital expenditures and the employee needs on the front end of the budget. Um, you know, certainly that's, that's one way to do it. I just have never seen it done at, at the county level here. So I would love to see it done that way and see it prior, prioritized that way, but I don't know that it will be. So that's the reason. And as, as Bonnie has said, it would be more in line with governmental accounting principles if we were to do that. So Based on that, you know, what, what I would suggest and what I would like to see moving forward is that the commission, you know, kind of evaluates this, gives us an indication of where we want to move with this, and then we move forward with the budgeting for fiscal 22 with that in mind. Once we've got that number in place, what I'd like to do once again, and, and we've kind of put this off a little bit to get this in place, I would love to sit down with the commission again and go through our investment policy, set up some of the parameters for the investment policy based on getting that reserve amount to the, to the point where we want it. And remember, this is something that we're going to target over the next several years, not something we're going to do immediately, but we have to set the groundwork to do it now. So that's kind of where I'm at. If there are questions, once again, I'd love to answer them uh, or, or try to. Um, that's all I've got. Thank you, Rob. Um, Bonnie, I know you've been sitting quietly and, and just smiling. So what do you have to add? She doesn't have anything. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
I thought Rob did a good, good um, explanation of my thoughts on it. Cause uh, as Rob said, we, we have discussed this and, and we agree to disagree on our minimum reserve suggestions. Uh, we're okay with that. Different people have different opinions and that's okay. Um, but no, I, I think the, the main concerns are we definitely need money for, for cash flow needs. Um, I, I ran, uh, well, I ran a ledger to see our, our highs and lows for cash, and we needed eight point seven million dollars just to make our payments. So, so to say that reserves is a little bit deceiving if you think of reserves as it's reserved for something. Well, I guess I guess not really. It's reserved for short term cash flow needs. Um, it's not reserved for a big capital project in the future. It's reserved for the next few months of what we need um, to pay our bills, to pay our payroll, to make all of our payments. So that's where my $10 million comes in for that, just of the cash flow needs. Um, as Rob said, um, things are going to be changing. We're going to be collecting the that the mineral tax payments monthly, which will even it out. Um, so I think in about two more years, we can probably assess how that's affecting us and bring that $10 million reserve for cash flow needs down. Um, once we see the effects of that. Uh, but at the same time, that $5 million emergency reserve that we have may need to go up at that point because we're not going to be able to project our revenues as well as we have um, in the past because we're not going to have enough. We're not going to have the information we need to accurately project those. So that emergency reserve um, may need to go up in in the future. Um, but yeah, I, it's not that I don't think capital is important and it's not that I don't think the employees are important. I think employees are very important and I think our capital is important as well. Um, but those just aren't things that the, that the county should be collecting tax dollars for, um, for the future. Uh, we shouldn't be collecting tax dollars from our current uh, residents and paying that benefit out in 20 years, the tax dollars that we collect from the taxpayers are meant to benefit the taxpayers um, that pay those taxes at that time. So, so that's my reasoning behind it. I know sometimes it's hard to, to grasp government accounting. I know it was for me um, because it is different than how I live my life financially, but um, that's just how it works. So, um, so those are my recommendations and those are my reasons for my recommendations. But um, I think we both have very valid points and just differences of opinion. Thank you, Ms. Berry. Commissioners, floor is open. Questions, Commissioner Toman. Well, Bonnie, the question I would have is, I understand using the taxpayer's money, but we know our revenue is, is really going down that's also going to mean a shortfall in services. So uh, how do you balance the two? So, um, and that's why I'm grateful that we have such a high reserve level now that we don't need to do it in one year. Um, my point is basically we have, we have $34 million in reserves. Uh, we can get by with 15 and I'm not suggesting we spend all of that this year, um, but we can slowly adjust government services um, and use some of that reserve to supplement the revenue so that we can get down to that point. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we just blow it all and get down to that point right away. I, I definitely think with our projected future revenue that we do need to look at reducing government, but I think that it can be done without layoffs. I think it can be done um, just slowly rather than all at once. And that's why I'm glad we do have such a high reserve balance right now that, we, that we're not forced to do it all at once. Thank you. Other questions, commissioners? Comments, not a question. Sure, come on, comment or question. Sure, the, uh, I mean, I feel comfortable with the, you know, 15% decrease scenario. Uh, buying us that much time, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15%, I guess. Um, so that when we're in 24, we're looking at, you know, a $20 million, $20 million in, in uh, after we fund, you know, of course, these are all, it's all speculation. The crystal ball is out. Um, but that feels to me like um, something that's more reasonable and doable. Um, as I've as we've done this before, I'm not, I'm not for 
everybody, you cut by 15%. Uh, I think some areas can cut more. I think some areas can cut less. We've talked about their cash carryovers. Some have been managed differently. And so it is much more nuanced, but I think an overall uh, decrease of 15% in our, our, our budget this year would be, I think that's financially responsible, fiscally responsible, and not, to me, it's not as, it's not what I thought we were gonna have to do, honestly. <laughs> I thought, I was thinking more like 30%. And so. Um, 15 sounds pretty good to me, and it still looks like it's, it, while it does decrease our, our reserves, it looks as though it still keeps us in a, a liquid position enough to be able to adjust to, you know, COVID-22 that may come in three years or whatever, so. Um, if that I happens, I'm blaming even, you. Can't even believe I said that. Yeah, <laughs> just, that, that sounded terrible. That's, that's my thoughts. I, you know, I think that uh, we do need to make cuts. We've talked about that. I think we're all aware of that. And um, I appreciate Rob and Bonnie putting this together and, and expressing their opinions and giving us some guidance. And um, again, Phil, the 15% is, that's, that seems doable. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Other thoughts, Commissioners? Comments? Commissioner Tolman again? Well, unless somebody else wants to first. Oh, go ahead. Um, well, I'm in favor of keeping a balanced budget, but in light of these projections, and I'm still very skeptical about the federal, what that, the federal minerals are going to do to our income. I, I think we're gonna hit a really hard, hard hit on that in the next few years because of major decisions being made right now. But in light of that, I think we should revisit the core Roden Bridge and the Clerk of Court have asked just to replace an existing staff member when they've already made over 30% cuts in the last few years. And I, you know, I, I don't think social services and other kinds of programs should take priority over those core, core services that those two entities are offering us. So, you know, I would like to see us put those two back on the agenda to consider funding now that we have more of the budget I would, information. I, would agree. I feel I feel better after seeing this not worse so i don't job. think we should go spend all of our money but also yeah. I, we have some people who have been very fiscally responsible and i don't think they should be penalized their their uh department should not be penalized for core services that the county really counts on thank you other comments commissioner shanefield thanks mr chairman um bonnie I was wondering if it would be possible for you to potentially prepare something to give us some additional information on what good solid accounting practices for nonprofits um, would be it, just in future meetings so that we know what their carryover should look like for a healthy nonprofit and would look at some of the cash flow things for that as well, just so that we're all on the same page and we have the same information around that. Okay. You okay with that? Other comments, Commissioner Smith? Rob, I, I forgot this. Uh, you and I exchanged some emails about uh, the uh, um, stimulus package that's working its way through uh, the Democratic Congress. And you said you had some info to share with us on that, perhaps some intel. What do you got there? That was going to be my next point after you finished everything on this. So as, as Commissioner Smith alluded to, he had, uh, when I sent the copies of the presentation out, he had sent me an email requesting um, information with respect to what the potential impacts for Sweetwater County could be of the $1.9 trillion package that Congress is currently looking at. I was not aware of anything at that point in time, but I, I made some calls and I, I went out to the National Association of Counties website I was able to find quite a bit of information on it. So, so basically, of the $1.9 trillion package that Congress is looking at, that, that the House has actually, I believe, passed at this point in time, um, we would be looking at what, what that overall bill would do is it would fund $350 billion to help states, counties, and cities. Of that, $130.2 billion would be split evenly between the municipalities and counties. And so in looking at that, the, the counties would get about $65.1 billion. Um, 
That's enough. And it's it's based on the population of the county in relation to the total number of people who are in the United States. So we would actually theoretically, if that bill were to pass as it is, receive eight point two million dollars. Um, the restrictions that are placed on that are currently in the bill. The funds would be distributed by the U.S. Department of Treasury. There wouldn't be a deadline associated with the funds. Entities would have to provide a certification on the use or need for those funds. And then counties would have the ability to transfer funds to certain private nonprofits. So that's, that's kind of the, the best information I've got it. I don't believe that that bill is going to pass in its current state. I can't imagine they'll pass a $1.9 trillion bill, but um, that's what it would do under the current appropriation. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, if, if the commissioners remember correctly, probably about three weeks ago, I forwarded a uh, mm -hmm. email to all the commissioners from WCCA and they were starting to break down that bill if it happened to go through in whole. And we did see for uh, Sweetwater County that there was uh, quite a, a uh, bit of money in there. My only question was, and I, and I still is, and I think Rob's helped a little bit as of that 8 million I saw coming from WCCA, were, were the city and town share taken out of it or not? That was been my only question. So I think so too, Commissioner Shanefield, but again too, uh, it's, it's a fluid bill and that type of thing. So uh, it's something to keep an eye on. I sure wouldn't at this point in time balance my checkbook on it and that type of thing. So, uh, but Rob, thank you for that. Uh, anything else, Commissioner Smith, regarding that with Rob? Any comments from other commissioners? Commissioner Lloyd. Yeah, just a couple thoughts. Um, I do agree with uh, Commissioner Toman in a balanced budget. And I think, I think this year we can't get to a balanced budget without really beheading and really, really making it unfair to people to make the adjustments and changes. But I believe we there's a reason we can look at this budget using the reserve advantage we have to get to what could be a balanced budget over a two to three year period. I initially would like to have seen it when we came into this discussion and, and almost looking at our budget as a two year cycle, um, even though we wouldn't be committing to the second to get to there, but you know we could portionally even potentially get there to three um, in three years and really start doing it. And I also agree with Ms. Toman. Um, that's a lot of agreeances with Ms. Toman today. So, but they, oh, I, um, out of the box, in the but box. they, uh, um, <laughs> you know, um, I, I think we need a balance. I, at first I, was, I put in my notes balance backwards, but I do think we need to balance the, the budget forward. We need to take a look at the core government pieces, take care of their budget, then go to the component agencies take care of their budget, then what's left over, go to the outside entities and take care of their budgets. And 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 honestly, and, and then we need to make some determinations within some of these, I think not only within core, but within component and within um, outside agencies, what our philosophy is in, in, in supporting those organizations. And if we, there might be organizations that we look at cutting and we say, well, hey, this is where we're gonna take you this year, but next year you may be here. This is where you, you'll need to go and giving them time to get to that point to adjust. But I do think we need to really take a, a group. And I know I've been really tough on some of the positions being added. And I know Ms. Toman specifically talked about um, a couple, um, Road and Bridge and, um, and uh, the clerk of court. But I, I think there's two things there. I think there have been agencies and I think Road and Bridge, if you look at the numbers Gene has sent us over the years, they've taken significant cuts. And if they have been at the table, and the reason I, and I, and one thing that we need to probably look at as a commission is a process. As we say, hey, when we get to the budget, um, we'll take a look at these positions and add them if needed. We need to come up with that process of what that would be and how we would make those decisions. But I also think every department head here, elected official, needs to really take a look at the services they provide. Are we providing more services than we need? Are we do, meeting the needs? And, and we're really starting to focus on that and moving backwards. But also in departments, the, the clerk's department took a, a significant hit with two or three employees, two employees during the early retirement. I know um, Mr. Aram um, Attorney Aramosby's office has taken a hit of at least two to three employees. This is spread throughout. and. And, 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 I, and I'm kind of like um, Ms. Toman is um, I have a hard time funding some of the outside agencies when our internal agencies are taking the hit. And so those are things I think we can take a look at. Um, let me just make sure I have all my notes um, covered there. But um, 
But I would like to see us take a look at this as a two or three year budget. And this is where we're going to get this year. This is where we're going to get next year. And eventually this is where we're going to get balanced because I think part of the problem is the, procrast the, the prognostications of financials don't make it look a whole lot better over the next two to four years. And I think we need to be prepared to shift that. But we also need to say what happens when it does get better in a few years that we don't revert back to some higher spending things and putting us in a bind when we are lower in the ebb and flows of what we deal with. So that's, well, I guess, my thoughts. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Other comments, commissioners? I concur. Well, I'm not totally concurring. <laughs> I'm concurring. I'm, with first everybody. of all, I, I truly believe it would take 20 to third, 25 to 30 percent cuts to go on a revenue equals expenses. Mm -hmm. They would need to do that. And I, and I don't think it hurts at all to continue that belief that, you know, to get to what is really needed. Now, when we talk about what we need to budget first and foremost, I, I, your order of budgeting is correct. Although the thing to keep in mind what even dictates more so is statute. Mm -hmm. Obligated statutory funding for the 12 mil which is what we go from. And then non-obligatory in our outside agencies, or I, I'm sorry, in our component units, as you look at the few, few we have, part of their budgets are obligated because some of those services are mandated by state statute. The rest of them are not mandated and that type of thing. So those, those are the things that can help guide us and where we go. There was a time this county has been very, very fortunate to have the money they've had over the years. And when you look at the, how the reserves have built up over the years, you go, wow, how did that occur? Realistically, where we see our revenue coming from, it's only falling in line to meet expenses of mandatory statute required by the 12 mil. It's forcing us in that direction. I had up on my screen, I just let me do a quick, bring it back up. I was looking at Rob's slide dealing with, uh, um, I'll get to it here in a second. Oh, darn it. Bear with me, Rob, and everybody else. Here we go. I was going back to your reasons to maintain a high, higher reserves. And one of the things, when you take a look at unfunded state mandates, mm -hmm. we're seeing more and more of them coming even out of this present session. They're cutting agency support. And realistically, they're looking, figuring the counties are gonna pick it up in the cities. When you take a look at the direct distribution, you take the fund that that's funded out of, the LISRA, Education is going to eat that fund up in two years. There will be no more direct distribution. Right now, we're faced with only percentage cuts in present bills that we do not support. We want it as laid out originally. But in two years, it's not going to be there. We may lose all of our direct distribution. And over the years, whenever there has been conversations, for the right reasons, I'm not blaming the Senate or anything or the legislators, for the right reasons, there's been talk about, well, we'll reduce here, but we'll find a way to backfill. And they haven't been able to. I don't know if they're going to be able to because they have bigger, bigger fish on the plate than direct distribution. Um, Senate file 60 is going to cause some stumbling, which has now um, been enacted. Um, so you just go through all those things. And yeah, I, I fully agree. I, I think I think 15% to work into it gradually is a good idea, but I'm wondering if it's enough. Second of all, I agree with every one of you that we need to consider where those cuts are coming from. I, I don't believe we cut positions, but as positions come, op come open in certain areas, more so than others, they're considered not to be refilled. I, I don't have an issue with that. But I also believe that on positions where we think maybe we should come back and take a look at, that should be a priority. Get through the budget system, get see where we're at, and then come back and see by prioritize 
which ones we can help out and supported by statutory obligated expenditures, not just because it feels good to give a service agency some money. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big one. When the money's there, let's help them all out. But when the money's not there, the first thing I must remind myself is in the county, 12 mil fire. People out in the counties, first time we don't have enough fire people to fight a fire, just to prevent a building from burning. And I can think back to last summer, if it wasn't for us staffing the fire the way we did, Simplot could have lost the building. That's already been verified that if those fire guys weren't available, they may have lost that building, as well as other back, um, structures out there. The other aspect to keep in mind is road and bridges. We talk about economic development, and we talk about bringing people to this county. How many people are going to want to drive down uh, 10 mile road out here going to the sand dunes when it's washboardy and we don't have people to go out there and take care of it. The ranchers that need these roads taken care of to move uh, trucks and stuff like that. So, I mean, those are just a few things to keep in mind. This is, this is not a simple task and there's no simple answer. But I believe between the five of us with the help of Rob and our employees, we, we can get it done. But it's strategically knowing where we need to reduce and not reduce and follow along those lines. So I'm, I'm, I, I like a slow moving target. I can hit it easier at my age. Um, but again, too, I, I don't want to make it too slow a moving target because that's not going to be good for the future of Sweetwater County. So with that, I'll accept other comments. This is a good dialogue, and I think it's a soul searching as well. Thank you. Other comments? Mr. Shanefield. Very briefly, um, I agree with you saying that it may not be enough. 15% may not be enough. Um, and I also have to say that even 20 million in reserves with what we're looking at projection wise, it gives me heartburn. And so I am um, going to have to process and marinate and look at yeah. some of this and look at, you know, kind of what the future looks like. But I think that um, I'm leaning on a little bit higher in reserves and a, a little bit more flexible in the percentage as well. Okay. And like, I think like Jeff said, maybe it was you, some may have to cut. You know, 10% Jeff, and Jeff talked need about to cut more. Be strategic, yeah. be Absolutely. surgical. Absolutely. And I also fall back on the duplication of services. I think that, you know, with fire working with our road and bridge to, you know, to assist with some of the parks maintenance and things like that, I think those are things that we're going to have to do right now. And eventually, I think in the long run, they're going to work out so much better get everybody out of their silos and into working together and it's going to end up saving us money and it's going to end up providing better services as well. One, one comment on what you said, the departments in this county have moved out of their silos. Absolutely. They have totally done that for this county, seeing this well in advance where it's at. Thank you. Go ahead. Other comments? Yeah, Mr. Oh, go ahead, Mary. No, go ahead. You go sure. first. Go ahead. Commissioner Tolman. Well, I might wanna, you know, I don't want you copying what I say. I'd rather copy <laughs> well, what I'd you say. Steal his thunder. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I think I just the message I would say to all of our uh, budget requesters is be strategic in, in how you uh, do your budget message uh, showing value to the county. What is the service that you show to the county that you should be funded over anyone else? And I don't think that we're saying, uh, if we say we're supporting core, that doesn't mean we're not supporting the outside agencies and the component units. It's just be able to show and justify the value, that, the service that you provide to the county and, and look for ways of, of making yourself or your agency more efficient so that we're all on a balanced playing field. And actually, if you look at the outside agencies, I mean, they, they actually, what is the 1.6 million? It's like a very small percentage of our, of our overall budget. So I didn't want you to think based on my prior discussion that I'm saying <laughs> cut all of those off. 
strategic, <laughs> strategic. Right. Very good. So Thank you. that's my uh, disclaimer, whatever. All right, Commissioner Lloyd. Yeah, and you know, when we talked about if 15% may not be enough, and but if it isn't, then maybe we do something where we do 15% this year, then some of the organizations that we see need greater cuts, take a bigger portion the following year and giving them 14 months to rebound, figure out how to get to, to the next year, if they have to make significant changes. And then kind of what Commissioner Shanfield um, said with the heartburn, um, I was, I kind of came in today with a number of about 24 million. And my number was based upon concerns about the future. And, but, and so when I think of 24 million, I mean, I don't think of, hey, I want to get to 24 million this year. I'm thinking over three to five years. And how do we gradually get there? Do we borrow five or six million this year to, um, um, to, to get to a more, you know, to do it. But then next year we don't borrow as much and take a little deeper cut. So there are options, but I will also say, I think these conversations are huge because we're seeing the departments, like you said, Doc, coming out of the silos, working together. And lastly, I think we could have cut more last year. And, and I don't think not having this discussion prior made it, this makes it so much easier going into next year, this your budget cycle. Okay, very good. No oh, good. Okay, comment. You're exactly right. Last year, we didn't do it because we did not see the, we were well into our budget procedures before we found out where our revenue was falling and everything like that. You're exactly right. We, if we had this last year, we could move into it a lot smoother. I agree with you. And then when you're saying borrowing, I hope you mean taking money out of reserves. Yeah, I ain't borrowing nothing. You're not gonna go to the bank on us? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nope, we're cutting okay. it off. <laughs> All righty, other comments, commissioners? I, I think we have something to marinate on, but to marinate on and think about, in Commissioner Lloyd's words, but I don't think we want to let it lie. So I've got to ask you, commissioners, when would you like to, how soon would you like to put this back on the agenda so we can start giving ourselves some guidance? I think... Mr. Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I think there's two things. I think, um, number one, I think within the next month, we go back and have that discussion. Maybe not, if it's not the next smart meeting, the first meeting in April, but even having a small discussion to see if anyone's had any new thoughts at the, in next meeting would be beneficial. But I also think we need to create a process of how to look at these positions that have been requested. So as we go into budget, we're also looking at those positions too. Yeah. As and a second piece of that puzzle. Yeah, and... I, and uh, yeah, I think uh, you can, for those positions and that, because of cost and everything, I believe you and Commissioner Shanefield work with HR and that type of thing that might be able to provide some guidance, you know, and that, uh, and that type of thing, how we can get there and what would be some good guidance as well as yourselves. Mm -hmm. So other thoughts, commissioners, for revisiting this? Uh just a question when mr tillman when do we want to set the reserve limit for the uh, that would be that would be the next April first uh, if we go if we decide april first we want to decide okay. with a mm -hmm. a meet with a small piece of the meeting in two weeks to uh say hey any more questions anything like that rob and bonnie may be available okay so just a little review in two, in two weeks and then first meeting in April, we'll count on Rob and Bonnie to be with us and we'll set the reserve amount. And then we'll also have an ongoing work, um, Commissioner Lloyd and Commissioner Shanefield with uh, let's, you know, keep it, keeping track of these positions and finding out uh, what would be a trigger to revisit them. Does that make sense? That sound okay? Roy? All righty. Anything else, commissioners? Bonnie, Rob, thank you very much. It's been very, very enlightening. And uh, I will also say concerning, but a little relaxed concerning, but even more concerning. I don't know where to put it, but thank you, Bonnie and Rob, for joining us and sharing the facts. Well, commissioners, just, just one last thought from me. I, I just, this, this actually stimulated the conversation that I was really hoping that it would. So, you know, thank you, Commissioner Wendling, for, for asking me to do this. And I, I think that it did do what I had hoped that it would. 
So, you know, I, I like the discussion that you had. I think you're moving in the right direction. And I 100% agree, uh, you know, had, had you done this a year ago and had, you know, I, I think this information was there. It just was not asked. We were not asked to present this information, um, but I, I think it will help. And, and I commend you. I think moving forward, we're going to be a lot better off for starting earlier on it. So thank you. Thank you, Rob. Bonnie, any last thoughts? Oh, had to unmute myself. Um, no, I, I agree with what's been said. I, I do think um, I do think this um, set, setting a minimum reserve level um, will help. Uh, and like I've said, we don't need to get there next year. It is it is a process to. It, it's just a minimum. We just shouldn't drop below a certain point. Um, it's not a, a how much we spend um, this next year. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think we have healthy reserves. I think. Um, I do think this definitely relates to the budget and what we're going to do this year and in the future. And um, I, I do like the idea of um, of looking further into the future and setting some goals and um, deciding what's important and for the commission to communicate that to us because um, we can't read your minds. So we we pick up bits and pieces from what you say and try to read your minds, but um, it's not always super clear. So. Uh, if, if you can make those decisions and, and communicate uh, that, then um, I think we can all help you along the way to get to those goals. Thank you, Bonnie. Anything else, commissioners? Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Rob. Uh, be safe out there, and we really appreciate the work you're doing here. Thank you much. Thank you. Commissioners, as we move on, next agenda item would be on other or for the good of the order. Is there anything, commissioners? Well, I failed to mention something when I did my report. Uh, I worked with Sally and we got the letters out uh, inviting the federal agencies to the federal update meeting on April 20th. Second meeting in April? Mm -hmm. Very good. For 1030 to 12, 1230. Yeah, okay, very good. That's a very good session. Thank you for that, Commissioner Tolman. Anything else, commissioners? With that, uh, we do have a couple executive session items under real estate and contracts. And if there's any action to be taken, we will uh, take it after the executive session. Um, at this point in time, I'm not sure there's any. Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Shanefield. Is there a second? second? Second by Commissioner Tolman. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll go into 